No. That's just taking me here. You're gonna get to hear my mum on the phone whilst watching this murder scene. So this is that police station, because that's the blue badger, right? Oh, please don't be gumshoe. It's been two months since Maya left the office. Two months without a single trial. I've had offers, but none I took. That is, until the day that girl showed up. February 22, 10.02 a.m. Right in Cold War offices. Why do I come here to the office every day? It's not like I want to work. There you are, finally. Where have you been? My sister's trial was tomorrow. Um, who are you? It doesn't matter who I am, it only matters who you are. The famous defense attorney, Mia Fey. Oh, uh, you're not Mia Fey, are you? I'm sorry, but Miss Mia Fey no longer works here. So you are the coffee boy? I'm Phoenix Wright, a defense attorney. Right, right, wait. You're the, the Phoenix Wright? The Phoenix Wright from the Edgeworth murder case? Um, yes, that's correct. It wasn't Edgeworth who was murdered, though. That's a relief, then. You're better than nobody. I'm sorry. I'm afraid I'm not taking cases right now. But you are Phoenix Wright, right? The undefeated defense attorney? Look, I'm not accepting any new cases. I'm sorry, but you'll have to try elsewhere. Please. I'm out of time. But, please, you have to help. It's my sister. Huh? Maya, could it be? Okay, I'll hear you out. R really? Thank you so much. My name's Ema, Ema Sky. I'm a scientific investigator. Scientific investigator? Let me, let me look. Looks like it's cleaning day again at the hotel across the way. I hear they're planning a second branch outside the city. He gads, the bellboy was staring right at me. He gads. M Mia's plan, Charlie. I've been taking care of him in Maya's absence. There's a post of the steel samurai on the wall. Maya, Maya stuck it up here on the day that she left. I didn't have the heart to take it down. I do sometimes get strange looks from the clients, though. Mia's desk. I sit here even less now that I've stopped talk taking cases. I ought to at least dust it off once in a while. Difficult looking legal book stand in a formidable roll. They mocked me. I tried reading one and it hurt my head. Alright, yeah. See this? It's my attorney's badge. Ah, well, I've never seen a real one before. You're the first one who's actually been interested in mine, believe me. Its composition is mostly silver, the gold plating is faking a bit. She's analysed it scientifically. There doesn't appear to be any corrosion due to sulfides. Sul sul Whatever, I'd give you $50 for it. Sorry, but it's not for sale yet. Ema, was it? So you're a scientific investigator? Yes, that's right. Is something wrong? No, it's just, you seem kind of a uh, jumpy, or maybe just young? Young? I'll be 16 years old this year. Oh, I see. What, it's only 16? I'm said to be formally assigned to forensics in three more years. My work is becoming quite well known, at my age, no less. Um, so what exactly is your current position, then? Well, legally speaking, I guess you'd call me an 11th grader. But I'm ready to do my job, at my age, no less. Great, another future professional in training. So what's this about a case? You said the trial's tomorrow. My sister didn't do it. Oh, thank you. I have socks, guys. They've got sprouts on them. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are you going to go up so that people can see you before I turn my cam off? There you go. Have a little bit of Scooby. You can see my Brussels sprout socks. You're not having my sandwich, little buddy. Good boy. You're such a good boy. You're such a good boy. You're such a good boy, huh? You're such a good boy. Yeah, you heard that? You gonna go? You gonna go? 
Let me just turn my cam off when I'm eating. My sister didn't do it. She wouldn't stop someone. I missed that. So it's a murder case. I don't care if there's a witness who saw her do it. She didn't do it. I know she didn't do it. It's a scientific fact. And there's a witness. You just talk to her. You have to talk to her. Right, I suppose I will. I promised her I'd bring me a fae, but that's interesting. How would she know me? Eh? So, you want to be a scientific investigator when you grow up then? Uh, excuse me? I'm not a child, I'll have you know. Still, it's good to have a goal, albeit a very unusual one. I believe investigations should be done scientifically. Don't you? Uh, yeah. Sure, can't fault her for a lack of enthusiasm. If this case is handled scientifically, I'm sure my sister's name will be clear. Your sister? I've been doing research, you know. I'm developing a new scientific method of case investigation. I'll show you when I'm done. I'm looking forward to it. Guess I should get down to the detention centre and talk to her sister. My sister asked for Mia specifically. This Mia Fay person was a few years below her in school, so they went to the same school, huh? She always told me to go to Mia if I ever needed a defence attorney. And, well, I need one. Um, incidentally, Mia is a woman. Now that you mentioned it, I guess it is more of a woman's name than a man's. Well, it's nice of you to help your sister out like this. You must be close. Well, actually, when she gets like she is now, I kind of hate her, huh? But, but she's my only family. Your only family? What about your parents? They died in a car accident when I was little. Oh, I'm sorry. Alright, we're going. Let's go. And I'm going to try to read and eat at the same time. So enjoy the sounds of me eating whilst reading to you. Detention center, visitor's room. Hmm, I wonder what's wrong with Ema. She's got, got quiet all of a sudden as soon as we arrived. Guard, I thought I told you I didn't want visitors. So, 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 sorry, ma'am. It, it's just, just your sister. No excuses. Or did you not want to raise this year? Hmm? Uh, uh, understood, ma'am. What was that all about? <coughs> Excuse me? Uh, hi, Lana. Funny. I seem to remember specifically telling you not to come here. So is this girl called Emma or is she called Emma? She's called Emma. I seem to remember specifically telling you not to come here. Perhaps my memory is failing. But look, I didn't want to come here either, okay? But your trial's tomorrow, and you still don't ha have a defense attorney. I'll be the one in court tomorrow. This has nothing to do with you, Emma. Excuse me, will you get down off my bed? No, you're not getting food. Go, out. Isn't that right, Mr. Wright? Hey, how do you know me? Mia mentioned you. I've heard quite a bit. Uh, I'm sorry, what exactly is it that you do? My name is Lana, Lana Sky. I'm chief prosecutor for this district. You're a prosecutor? Two sisters, one a lawyer. Could this be a coincidence? Emma, Lana. I mean, they're just, li just like Mia and Maya. It's something wrong with the right. This guard monitors the visitor's room. He's frozen in fear of the frigid Miss Lana. I'm feeling a bit chilly myself. Smell for the camera. Your bag looks new. I polish it daily. In a few years, the gold plate will flake off. And then we'll see the real you. Gah, whatever happened to innocent small talk? Give it three years and you'll see what you have become. She's got a point. She has got a point. There's something you should know from the start, which is the suspect in this case has confessed to the crime. Huh? Well, wait, the suspect. The suspect is me. I did it. Well, Mr. Wright, well, why don't you begin by telling me exactly what happened? The crime took place yesterday, February 21st, at 5 15 pm. The same basic models as Mia and Maya, respectively. I have noticed that. Like, you can see it in the faces that they look very similar to that.
Sorry, I am currently also eating, as I said. I think it's a fun fact. It's one of the things I really like about having watered in my- I know you were joking by the way, Hulk. This isn't me like ranting at you or anything. But one of the reasons I like having watered in my chat is because he comes up with all these like little bits of knowledge. You know, and I genuinely am interested in them. I'll never remember them. And some of them I probably know already and just forgot because my memory's so bad. But literally when Warwick comes out with like facts and stuff, I'm always there like, oh my god, that's so cool. If I was an anime, if my stream was an anime, Warwick would be that character with like a that pops up on the side with a whiteboard, tapping it with a stick. Ported bits. Oh my god, this sandwich is turkey and trimmings. So it's got like everything in it. It's got sausages, turkey, bacon, Cranberry sauce, stuffing. Watered bits. That's pretty good. But yeah, I, I really like when people have, like, small factoids about games. And Void knows everything. Like, literally, Void knows everything about everything. Orcs balls. The crime took place yesterday, February 21st, at 5.15pm. That's quite specific. It was in the witness's dis dis dep deposition. A witness clearly saw me committing the crime. Uh, my, that was a bit of bad luck, wasn't it? The crime took place in the underground parking lot at the prosecutor's office. The body was found in the trunk of my subordinate's car. The prosecutor's office, huh? In your subordinate's car trunk. Classy. I was arrested on the spot, caught right handed, as it were. Well, that's just great. So, who was the victim? An investigator with the police department. I suppose the correct term is detective. A detective? Death was due to a loss of blood. He was stabbed once in the stomach. By you? Death wasn't immediate, but the wound was fatal. I see. Allow me to repeat myself, Mr. Wright. The victim was a detective. You know what that means, don't you? Uh-oh. What? Mr. Wright, what does it mean? Well, it means the police department will consider it a matter of pride to have me found guilty. They will use any means at their disposal to do so. This case gets worse and worse with everything I learn. To the chief prosecutor, that is correct. I'm responsible for overseeing every trial handled by prosecutors in this district. You stole that one from Som? It doesn't matter where you get them from, and I won't give that drill stealing thief any, you know, leeway. Nah, I joke, I love Som. I make sure the prosecutors have what they need to do the job and manage every aspect. Those are my responsibilities in a nutshell. That's an awfully large nutshell. So I'm a little surprised. I would think you'd recognize the district's chief prosecutor, Mr. Wright, huh? In fact, it seems impossible you wouldn't. Um, Lana, what happened to your hand? Oh, this? I cut myself by accident when I stabbed him, that is. Huh? I'm not very good at being a criminal, I suppose. How am I supposed to defend this? Time to change the subject. Wait, she was in the class ahead of Mia, wasn't she? Um, you were in school with Mia, correct? A few years above her. Emma told you that too, did she? Well, well, why not? I did drag him all the way here from his office. Although it seems he has very little in common with Mia. Hey, I was- it was in law school. I was in my third year and she was auditing the class. She was different than the other students. Different? She was strong. She'd do anything to become a defense attorney. Anything. That was probably why she was attracted to me. Uh, excuse me? Intellectually attracted. Lana was top of her class in school. I was the best there was. Oh. I'm pretty good in school too, by the way. It sounds a bit different when Emma says it. Well, Mr. Wright, 
Uh, excuse me? As you can plainly see, I'm admitting my guilt. I think it's safe to say there's no way you can take this case. None. But, but, Lana. Why? Why are you doing this to me? You never think of anyone but yourself. I know you didn't do it, Lana. I know. So, so how can you say you did? If I lose you, I'll be all alone. I, I hate you, Lana. Mr. Wright, y yes? I believe our discussion here has ended. The rest I'll leave to you. Um, you mean you're requesting my services as your defence? Don't lose any sleep over it. Your client has confessed after all. The case is over. Right. I'll do what I can to get to the bottom of this. So what I'm learning, what I'm learning, right, is that basically Phoenix Wright is the, the, the defence attorney to all the prosecutors in the land. Meeting time. Good luck in your meeting, Warded. Oh, we're at this case now. We are at this one. It's two sick kids now, so I'm working on OBS and such. That's fair. That's fair. I need to... I need to work on stream. So I've been trying to really badly focus on getting some YouTube stuff done. Now that my YouTube stuff is done, I need to think of stream as well. Like, I've got this whole plan now that, like... I'm going to try to get up in the morning, play a game, like, when I'm waking up until about 11 o'clock. Then 11 o'clock, have my lunch. And then work either streaming from 1pm on my stream days, on my off days, doing, like, work on YouTube stuff and stream stuff until later in the night. That is my big plan. It fell today because it was too cold. I didn't get out of bed. Who's messaging me? Ooh, I have about five different messages about the Formula One stuff. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait one gosh darn minute. I'm here freezing my fucking balls off and you put a fan on? Best way to work on your stream is to go to Hawks Rock stream and steal shit from there. <laughs> I don't even know what I want to work on with my stream, to be honest. Like, I can't have a lot of commands because I get sentry, um... What's it called? I can't remember the name of it. Sentry Overload. So, like, if I had a lot of alerts and commands going off all the time, it would just make me very nervous and anxious, and I just wouldn't stream. So I have to be, like, super careful with what I do. But I do want to do some stuff. I just don't know what. I'm, like, so stuck on what I want to do. Hey, Candle, how's it going? Right, I'll do what I can to get to the bottom of this. Lana has confessed to the crime, yes. But something doesn't fit. It's that look in Emma's eyes. There's something else going on here, and I'm going to find out what. I'm sorry, Mr. Wright. Huh? About what? My sister. She's not always like that, you know. I just never expected to be defending another prosecutor again. She's changed a lot. She used to be so gentle, always smiling. Everybody liked her. I see. Sorry, but I'm having trouble imagining that. What happened to her? I don't know for certain myself. I think maybe she... Well, maybe not. Sounds like there's something there that defies a simple scientific explanation. Let's go check out the underground parking at the prosecutor's office, shall we? Uh, okay. You see, I'm the opposite. I like when I can get DaVinci working. I like working on videos for YouTube. When I look at OBS and stuff, I guess it's because, like, you guys are good with computers anyway. I'm not. When I look at OBS or stuff that I want to do on stream, it goes over my head and I get overwhelmed and I just can't do it anymore. So I walk away from it. Like, the amount of times Leo has said he'll, you know, sit me down and go through stuff with me. And then I, it's like, he'll be there and be like, right, you want to do OBS stuff? And I'm like, no. Because I just, I, it's just too stressful. 
But then when it comes to like creative stuff, like my videos and stuff, I'm not good at it. And one of the point reasons my YouTube videos suck is because my computer can't handle running uh, video processing or editing software at the minute. Like it's not a very strong computer and you need a strong computer for them. So like when I do work on YouTube stuff, sadly my computer just drives me insane and I end up giving up. But I like the creative stuff more than I like working on OBS. That's why I've been trying to do YouTube this year and failed miserably. I made three videos, I think. Of course, I must have to work on the panels instead. Nice, nice. It's hard for you to stop when you start. As I said, like, I I'd like to do some stuff. I only want, like, two or three different things. I, I, I couldn't stand having too many because it would just make me very anxious, like... <clears throat> having things go off a lot makes me anxious. It's why when people start setting stuff off in live stream constantly, I walk away and leave the stream for a second. Or I just mute him until it's over. So, so when he gets a lot of commands and stuff going off and you see me disappear, that's why. But I, I would like, I would like a mama one. I, 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 she's just, she's just the queen of my heart. I miss her. I want natural muscles. You can get to create with it too. Yeah, but it's like, the technical side of it bores me. <laughs> and it's just too much for me to think about. It took me. I had to actually go to my friend to find out how to turn a green screen thing you know, to work on stream so I could get my PNG to work. And he was like, how have you been streaming for two years and not know that? And I was like, well, I've, ne I've never looked at things like that. I've never done that. You got so, so used to your life that so you don't even hear them all the time. February 22nd, prosecutor's office. I, I have a heart attack every time, like... My sub alert or something goes off. I'm like, oh my god, something's going on. I don't like it. <laughs> but as I said, that's just my autistic brain. It it doesn't. It gets very overwhelmed very fast with sounds. I've never liked sounds in general. Like, I, it probably to do with me being deaf and everything. Like, it it makes me very panicky when there's too many sounds going off all at once. Which is why all of my alerts are very short and very to the point. Oh, my do people spam board, stupid. Pros prosecutor's office, underground parking lot. So this is the lot where it all happened. Looks like they're still investigating. Funny that my first visit to the prosecutor's office should be like this. Hey everyone, keep up the good work. H hey, what are you th thinking? Well, they're gonna be my co-workers three years from now after all. No harm in saying hello. Actually, there is. You know attorneys aren't supposed to examine crime scenes. I'm trying to not stand out too much here, see? Hey there, you expect him to go unnoticed to hear partner? P partner? Who the fuck is this Aaron Black looking bastard? What do we have here? Looks like a bambina got loose loose from the ranch and is up to no good. Folks gotta learn to keep them do doggies tied down, partner. But Mr. Marshall. Marshall looks more like a sheriff to me. Looky here, bambina. I know how you feel. But this is my gang's gold strike, see? Strike? This is our claim, our territory, with a mother load of evidence. If you're fixing to mess with what's ours, you'll regret it, partner. You know what dreams the cacti out in the desert dream? You want to? What's this guy talking about? You hurt you head along home now. Happy trails, Bambina. Was that a uh, ombre, a friend of yours? Uh, kind of, sort of. Yeah, he's a detective. Who thinks he's a sheriff from the Wild West, it seems? I want this! What's this? A wallet? Um, excuse me, officer. What, what, wait, what are you doing, Mr. Wright? What am I doing? I just found this wallet, so I'm handing it over to the police. I don't believe it. This is real basic. Anything at a crime scene is ev evidence. Let's be scientific about this, please. Just put it in your pocket. How hell is that scientific? Sounds like theft to me. Wallet hastily stuffed into pockets. You and your Brian have a real life... What, me? Well, yeah, I mean, I have a shit ton of mental health issues. 
<laughs> and I'm autistic. It's a hard life to live. I'm cool to do you already, and not my tender age. My stupid Brian. Here, I'll teach you a trick to examining evidence in detail, okay? By the way, her eyes are sparkling. I can tell she's been waiting for this. Okay, okay, now look at the court record. You have to be sure to examine evidence carefully on all sides, so let's start examining from every angle. Oh shit, we're proper! Oh look, I think there might be a clue here. You should press... You should check it out with a press of enter. I, I wanna... We're going proper fucking detective mode on this now. Look at this. My autism is my stupid brain. Yeah, like, as I've said before, I don't mind talking about all this stuff on stream because, like, if someone comes in and they're like, oh, actually, you know what? I know what that feels like, and I'm not, you know, I don't have autism, but, you know, maybe I do, thinking about it. You know, kind of thing. But I also don't use it as the proper... Like, I just genuinely have a lot of problems. <laughs> I don't know it's my problem, but, you know. Who is this? This. This is an ID card. Sergeant Bruce Goodman. ID number 5842189. See? Well, isn't scientific investigation useful? I guess, though I don't see what science has to do with it. We were this, uh, looking at symptoms for your son, you learned a lot. Yeah. Oh my god, there's so much fucking... There's so much meat in this sandwich! I'm just gonna eat this sandwich now. know a little bit about these things as well though because like I've had a conversation with a friend recently and they described a lot of like the things that they struggle with and I was like actually you know what that very much sounds like everyone I know with ADHD and ADH or whatever it's called and like I'm not saying you have it but maybe you want to look into stuff about that and maybe you know you'll learn a little bit about yourself and they did. And it helped them. So good an idea. I I'd hope a hawk would never commit a crime. I believe in you, Hawk. You're like my hero. Right. Let's be sure to examine every piece of evidence we find. I guess I've got to be on my toes from now on. Oh god. I said I wanted to play a CSI game. This is getting more like a CSI game. Look, a door. This must mean something. I'm not sure that door means anything. No, it won't open. A mysterious lock. I failed to see what's mysterious about it. Mr. Wright, we need to learn to enjoy life more. Let's finish our investigation first, shall we? Aha! A ladder. Um, that's a step ladder. What's the difference? In scientific terms, please. It's a scientific car. Huh? Look at the basic nature of things, Mr. Wright. This is all- this all seems so horribly familiar somehow. Here, phone. Let's see if it works. 
Hey, don't touch stuff. We don't need to be touching. I can't hear anything. My ears. No, my ears. Maybe it's due to the bar barometric pressure. What's she babbling about? Hey, what did you just say? So you can hear just fine. The phone's broken. This wall's in our way. It's got a faucet for water. Wait, I know. This wall is merely a facade hiding the truth. This is no wall, but a water tank. I failed to see how it makes any difference either way. An oil drum. Looks like it's filled with water. It it's heavy. I can't even budge it. The drum over here is on its side. Wait, I know. I'll hide in here and do a stakeout. I think you'll probably just get arrested. In fact, you may not even have to hide in the drum to get arrested. What? I'm not suspicious. You are suspicious. This is where the cars leave the lot. The arrow on the ground makes it look more like an entrance. What are you talking about? It's plainly an exit. Or maybe it's both. Kind of dual purpose. Aha, the theory of relativity. What? Uh, I've got to write this down. Uh, hey, hey, Mr. Wright. Maybe you know, was Mr. Relativity German or was he British? Mr. Relativity? Are you sure that was his name? So, we're working with an idiot now, right? Three of you guys are on my suggested streamer list now? Nice. It's because we're important. You know, it's because we're all super important. We're like the most important streamers you'll ever meet. I be going? Do I not have anything else to examine? Oh, wait. Look, stylish glass board room. Very nice. You can see the whole parking lot from in here. It says security. Perhaps it's a cafe. Huh? Cafe security. Yeah, that must be it. Let's check it out later. Um, I hate to break it to you, but I think that's probably just a security guard office. You know, I scored a 97 on my science test the other day. Too bad they don't have a test for common sense. Name and ID number are written here. Sergeant Bruce Goodman. I wonder why they only use numbers for IDs. What else would they use? Letters, silly. They're the reason we have a written language in the first place. True. Sergeant Bruce Goodman. ID. Yabba Dab. See? Wouldn't that be better? Yabba Dab. Well, it does have a certain ring to it. Exactly my point. It doesn't make, take much to amuse her. Isn't it purely because it's like... I don't know what I was going for. It's harder to guess numbers, I think, or something. Alright, it's nothing else, I don't think. I don't believe there's anything else. I don't believe it. You see this? Ah, I've noticed that defense attorneys have a tendency to what want to show people things. What is this? A behavioral study of lawyers? No, I didn't want to go there. Wait, well. No! I'm going around in circles! No! Ah, she's not gonna come back. Right, I am missing something then, surely. Do anything with this? What am I missing? Did I look at everything on here? Oh, wait a minute. Wait. Oh no. I thought maybe I thought maybe I would zoom in and I'd be able to see stuff, you know? I was I was trying to big brain that and it didn't work. It wasn't a big brain move, guys. 
But it's nice. It's like the Pokemon IDs, you know, that you get in Pokemon games nowadays. Oh, wait a minute. I have seen what I've missed. I can see what I've missed. For fuck's sake, I'm an idiot. I am an idiot. Wait, wait, wait. How, how have they made an outline like this? Well, no time to waste. Let's get hunting for clues. I wonder what this is. My well, partner. Looks like you got no intention of going home quietly. The sheriff. Like I said before, this here's our claim. You best be moseying along unless you're fixing to bite the bullet. Gas, scary. Could you just tell us one thing? Who owns that car? Well, well. That little filly's got a good nose on her. You want to know who rides that red Mustang with the body in her saddle, eh? But please. No problem, partner. About time for vittles anyway. Get yourself to the saloon up on the 12th floor of the prosecutor's office. Might just find you a crevasse you like. Prospector's office. Where does this guy think he is? And when for that matter? Note to self. Look up Vittles. Saloon. Crevessa. Maybe we should check out room 1202, the High Prosecutor's Office. In any case, stay away from the car. You can look around here all you like. Just keep your paws of our claim. Right, great. No, let me go. Great. Maybe there's some clues around here, Mr. Wright. Let's check it out. Excuse me? Are you two all set? Us? Who the fuck is this? She's got sushi on her hat. Have a good look, 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 Moogle. What's this? She couldn't be. You're, you're selling lunches here? This is a crime scene. Hello, half and half, was it? Oh, a thanks. And you, sir? Y yes. Some crunchy goodness coming at you. Uh, thanks. Interesting way of doing business. This area is off limits to anyone without clearance, especially passers by or are you officers. Uh, no, but you, you don't exactly look like the type to have appearance. Well, that's hardly a way to greet someone, even if my days as the cough-up queen are over. Could cough-up? Huh? You know, I'm feeling kind of full. Maybe I'll pass some lunch. I'm quite connected to this case, you see. The images are burning to my eyes, you might say. Yes, all the sordid secrets. Secrets? She's a witness. Dear me, are you a slow one, aren't you? I'm referring to the murder, the stabbing of the detective. What? What? A witness clearly saw me committing the crime. You mean you're the witness my sister was talking about? Please, cop up, Queen. Tell us what happened. The name is Angel Star. Don't you go forgetting it. And before you know it, I'll have you whimpering at my heels. Y yes, ma'am. Yipe, she means it. The defense attorney must be able to fight. How about you? Do you think you can win? How about tackling Lunch Lad's Pickle Supreme Lunchbox? Wow, it's really crunchy. Box of pickles. Kind of a sad lunch if you ask me. I like pickles! What's wrong with pickles? About this card. Lunchland vendors only accept cash, no cards. Especially not a card belonging to someone else. No, no, this isn't a credit card. It's an ID card. It belongs to a detective. And you're showing this to me, the lunch lady. Why? That's like showing a fine honeyed ham for a detective. Why do I always feel like I'm being mocked? Because you are being mocked, my dude. Somehow, I knew. Yesterday was a day of destiny. I knew something was going to happen. Just like I know that the daily special on Friday every week is salmon. Destiny was yesterday special for some reason. You're a defense attorney, right? You should know then. You should know the foul misdeeds of the evil ones who haunt this den of inequity. The evil ones? Prosecutors. They have no qualms at all about black blackening the name of innocence. And yesterday they paid homage to the most evil one of all. They gave an award for King of Prosecutors. What a farce. So she's saying. There was some sort of prosecutor's convention yesterday. I was almost compelled to la lace their lunches with something foul. Do you have a personal grievance against prosecutors or something? Or is there some kind of scientific evidence of this, um, evil? Young miss, knock me at your own risk. You'll soon find out why they call me the cough-up queen. Ew. The most heinous of all, the evil ones. The one they awarded yesterday. It was in his cart they found the body. Prove that he devours the evilest lunches of all. But really? Really what? I'm really confused. One thing's clear, this lunch lady has a thing against prosecutors. 
So what exactly was it that you witnessed, Miss Star? It was a fascinating spectacle, to be sure. I now feel I know what they say when they talk about a woman's wrath. See, Lana Sky willed that life so. Her knife flashed in anger, bringing him to a sad end. It was truly a sight to see. You, you mean you saw the very moment of the crime? The sound of his silvery ties to this world be being cruelly cut still rings in my ears, and the rhythmic beat of Lana Star Sky's knife. Wait a second, do you know Lana Sky? Hmm. Of course, it's quite a feat becoming chief prosecutor. How many lunchboxes of sin did she pack to make that journey, I wonder? She always travels light. Now why would this pretty lunch lady know the chief prosecutor's name? Um, can we ask you a bit about yourself, Miss Star? I come here every day to sell lunches. I import only the freshest and best from the Far East. For some reason, the box lunches are a hit here. Why not make the lunches here rather than import them? Did you say something? N no Only true connoisseurs can understand. The kind you can only tell some the kind you can only tell someone who has tried General Soul's trail a bit lunch set. And uh, never mind, you win. I don't even want to appreciate part of Trail a bit's flavour. Anyway, I come here every day to sell lunches. My boyfriend works in the security room here at this prosecutor's office. Y your boyfriend? See the security room over there, the glass wall booth. I sell my lunches, and since I'm here anyway, I drop in to see him. Since you're here anyway, I guess selling lunches is more important than romance. So to scientifically analyse the data available so far, you, Miss Star, are a lunch vendor with an ulterior motive for coming here. Useful analysis, not. I think it was useful. She was really useful. Did you have a bad experience with a prosecutor, Miss Star? I sense some hostility. Hostility? Ha, perhaps. Prosecutors are all alike, and the bigger they get, the worse they smell. Kind of like 10-day-old clams and chowder. I wonder if Miss Dahl was involved in some sort of legal trouble in the past. That would be a short case of food poisoning, scientifically speaking, of course. I mean, now you're talking cough-up queen. I thought she was just a lunch vendor, but now I'm not so sure. Alright. Can I not... Oh, I can go here. February 22nd, High Prosecutor's Room, Office 1202. Is that a steel samurai I see before me? That's, that's Edgeworth's suit. Are we in Edgeworth's room? This is the kind of room that just screams I can do the job. Quite a change from your office, really. Thanks. Look, look, there's a trophy or something here. A trophy? What, that shield? It takes real nerve to display stuff like this. Whoever's office this is, they must be a real stuck-up jerk. Phoenix Wright, you never tire of prying into other people's business, do you? That voice, it is, it's edgy. There he is! Long time no see, Edgeworth. Huh? Ah! M -m -m mr Edgeworth! You know, you know him from somewhere. Uh, of course, I'm his biggest fan. My sister introduced us once and... Right, her sister is the chief prosecutor after all. Well, what brings you here? I'll warn you, I've been known to be a real stuck-up jerk. No, no, did I? No. It was just Mr. Wright here, he... Hey, don't blame me. Well, we're just here to investigate a murder case. Murder? A body was found in this nasty bright red sports car in the parking lot. Emma, it's his sport car! They literally told you to come here because it was his car! Emma, please! That would be my car. What of it? Look at him. Look at him. He's enjoying this. Emma, I literally have a memory that lasts for two seconds and I remembered what he said. I'll say one thing. She certainly can scream. I'm gonna have a look around, but I'm also eating the twigs now. Maybe I'll take that name plaque as a souvenir. Don't, he'll sue you. Look at him. Wait, wait, wait. Isn't that the dish set that the bellboy had?
Silver's like this, making me want to curl up and take a nap. I bet he boards over his case files here until, we, until the wee hours of the morning. And he takes off his jacket, rolls up his sleeves, and goes to sleep using his arms as a pillow. I don't believe it. She's actually daydreaming about Edgeworth working. I bet in the morning he has sofa hair and no creases in his cheek in the seams. Sofa hair is cool. Sofa hair could be cool. Boop, 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 boop. Wow, this jacket is even lacier than his usual ones. This must be his lucky trial jacket. Lucky jacket, right. I've never seen him wear it. I'm sure there's a story behind why it's in a frame. Maybe I'll, I'll be naughty and take a picture. She's getting way too excited about this. My, 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 what an amazing bouquet. Just right for Mr. Edgeworth. No kidding. Hey, there's a card on it. Back from the dead, Wendy. Wendy, I've heard that name before somewhere. And besides, it's a giant steel samurai. Well, I want one, huh? There's something written on the bottom of this foot. Between a rock and a hard place, Wendy. Wendy, is she Mr. Edgeworth's fiance? No, she's an old bag. Um, I don't think so. Oh, cute. What well, pretty tea set. I go <clears throat> more for the instant tea bags myself. Amazing. The drawer below is filled with packets of tea leaves. They're all sorted by place of origin and flavour. Look at this, raw blend, one exquisitely splendid concoction. There's such a thing as taking a hobby too far. Hey, a chessboard. I'm not too up on my chest, but it looks like blue's in a bit of a tight spot. The red knights are surrounded with a blue pawn. Hmm? Those horses are mounted knights. Their swords have really sharp edges. And check out that poor pawn. His head is kind of spiky. Kind of reminds me of you. Mr. Edgeworth must be an avid chess player. What's wrong, Mr. Wright? Edges surrounding a pawn with spiky hair. Nah, it's nothing. <laughs> Whoa, these are all case files. They're stacked up on the ceiling. It's even a ladder. Odd. I thought Edgeworth wasn't good with fights. He must have something to, uh, someone to get them for him. Strange. Why did I just picture Detective Gumshoe? He must study these cases, case reports so closely. He's so cool. You wouldn't say that if you saw him sweating bullets up on that ladder. Got anything else that can... Whoa, what of you? It must be nice to have an office on the 12th floor. I guess you would feel important. Incidentally, were you, to, were you to jump out of this window, the time until impact of the ground would be... Got it. Approximately 3.23 seconds. That's handy to know. I hate to think that comes into consideration later. I've been wondering, what the heck is this? It has a big K on it. Mumbles of prosecutors. Huh? What's that? It's the King of Prosecutors trophy. K -k -k King of Prosecutors? It's a great honour. They send that shield to the best prosecutor each year. What? So? So that K, that's... K stands for King? Yeah, you got a problem with that? I didn't design the thing. King of Prosecutors. Kind of like Employee of the Month, only better. I once dreamed of being a defense attorney a long time ago. What? You wanted to be a defense attorney, Mr. Edgeworth? Yeah, my path is laid out clearly before me. I have no time to reflect on what might have been. Say, Edgeworth, I was wondering about this. M Mr. Wright, how? Huh? What? Are you sure you should be showing that to Mr. Edgeworth? Oh, he'll take it for sure, won't he? So I wish I could be on the same side as Mr. Edgeworth, but then my sister would be found guilty. If she sighs any deeper, I'm going to start getting depressed. So basically this says you were the best of the best last year, huh? You can take that foolish grin elsewhere, right? I lost a day of work to receive that travesty. Huh? Why's that? I had to go to the police department to receive that broken shield. The police department? Yes, right next to the police station downtown. You've been there, haven't you? Where Detective Gumshoe works, yeah. Um, I was wondering something about your shield. Why is it broken? What does it matter? I've got more important things to worry about. Oh, right. He doesn't seem too concerned about his award for better or for worse. Yesterday was a very busy day for the prosecutor's office. Maybe we should ask him more about yesterday. So the body was found in your car. Go ahead, say it right. You think I did it, don't you? After you went through all the trouble to help me last year, no less. No, no, we don't think you did it. I mean, it was my sister who stabbed him. Uh, wait, no, she didn't do that. I mean... Wait... 
Marjorie, you're the chief prosecutor. It's little sister, then. Y yes, sir. Emma Sky. It's uh, it's nice to meet you again. Now that didn't sound forced at all. Ah, now I remember. You've really grown. I'll admit, it was a surprise for me too. To think that my own car would become the scene of a murder. More surprising still, I'm being forced to prove my superior's guilt. I can understand. Wait, what did you say? Lana Sky is the chief prosecutor, the top prosecutor in the district. She can't prosecute herself, so I'll be the prosecutor at the trial tomorrow. You, Mr. Edgeworth? That was a lot of prosecuting going on right there. To be honest, it's a bit of a miracle I'm still here at all. What do you mean? Rumours. You've heard the rumours about me, haven't you? Miles Edgeworth. It's hard to remember a time when there weren't rumours about this guy. But forging evidence, arranging false testimony, illegal searches, you name it. Thanks to you, my innocence was established in a trial at the end of last year. However, there are some who say I'm the one responsible for the current incident. What? What? That's crazy. Hmm. Some people need very little to. Li there. Some people need very little excuse to think ill of others. It's a fact of life, impossible to stop. But some of them even go so far as to present me with toys like this. They think it's funny. Toys? That bronze shield? There's got to be a story behind that one. Chief Prosecutor Sky, yes, we first worked together on a case two years ago. It was my first big case. That's right, I remember. Two years ago, I wasn't even a lawyer yet. Since then, I always felt that she was looking out for me. It appears I was mistaken. M mistaken? Why? I mean, I know she's not the warmest person, but I'm sure she felt some responsibility for you. Then, why? Why did she stab someone in the trunk of my car? Not only that, she stabbed him with my knife. What? What? Mr. Edgeworth, your knife was the murder weapon. To be specific, it was the knife I keep in the toolbox in the trunk of my car. Um, Edgeworth, what? Are you sure you didn't do it? Come on, can't you take a joke? You have a strange sense of humour, Mr. Wright. Could you tell me more about yesterday, the day of the murder? Yesterday was the annual cleaning day at the prosecutor's office. Cleaning day. Working with the police department, we sort and file all evidence for solved cases. We call it evidence transferable. Wiping your hands of old cases, in other words. Oh, and another thing. A ceremony was held at the police department. There's an annual review and rewards for outstanding police officers and prosecutors. And that's when you got the shield. I was at the police department yesterday afternoon. I got back here at 5.12. That's very precise. People like myself and Mr. Edgeworth pride ourselves on our precision, Mr. Wright. No, I place little faith in my memory. The only thing I trust is solid evidence. This is the parking stuff from the underground lot. The murder took place around 5.15. So the murder happened right after you got back. What? Right? I'd appreciate it if you direct that suspicious glare elsewhere. Um... Who the hell was that? Excuse me, but is Mr. Edgeworth uh, anywhere on the premises? I'm Edgeworth. What is it? I'm here, sir, at the request of the chief, sir. I've got your report, sir. Report? What? Did you find new evidence in the case against Chief Prosecutor Sky? I don't like the way this conversation is going at all. Uh, Sky, sir. No, sir. No name of that kind, sir. Not in this report, sir. I think I just heard Edgeworth's lid blow. Mr. Edgeworth lid is an honorary type, is it? I made a clear request to the police department, did I not? I need to focus on the trial tomorrow, so don't bring me anything unrelated. Sir, but sir, I'm just following orders, sir. You told me to bring this to you. I wasn't aware of the particulars of your arrangement with us, sir. Give me your name. Uh, uh, yes. Yes, sir. M -m Meekins, sir. Officer Meekins. Right, Officer Meekins, take your report and leave. And good luck with that raise next month. Whimper. But, but, sir, I d didn't know. Poor guy. Looks like he was absent on the day they gave out brains and good luck. Right. Y yes, sir. Guy, he caught me off guard. As you can see, I'm busy. You may leave now. L let's do what he says, Mr. Wright. The victim was a detective from the same department as the p patrolman just now. Go down to the police department. You can ask more there. Uh, uh thanks. You seem to have finally come down, at least. Right. We have been told where to go. We have been shouted at.
February 22, Police Department entrance. That still doesn't look like a badger. Phew, we're finally here. Why would they put the police department so far away from the prosecutor's office? Beats me, that took almost 30 minutes by taxi and traffic wasn't even that bad. The police department, huh? I've only ever been to criminal affairs next door. Hmm. Hold on, what's that? Disturbing. Why does it undulate like that? Oh wait, I know. This is the blue badger. They're trying to make him the police mascot. Wow, Mr. Wright, you sure know a lot about the police. Still, he does seem familiar somehow. Forget the blue badger. Who's that, that next to him? Someone appears to be dancing with the blue badger. Uh, oh, he noticed me. He sure is running over here fast. Hey, 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 pal, what, what are you doing here? That's my line, Detective Gumshoe. Specifically, why were you dancing over there? What? Um, well... Well, at least he doesn't seem to be busy. This is our chance to get information. Hey, I'll have you know I'm a very busy man, pal. Let me look. Uh, I was wondering about that. What? The Dancing Blue Badger. It's my masterpiece. We made this detective gumshoe. The chief threw together some designs and I just did my thing, pal. And nice work. It's battery powered so it can go anywhere. There's no switch so it just dance, dance, dance until the batteries die. Poor Blue Badger. Fate to dance until he drops. Look, that patrolman is saluting the other guy. He must be a detective. And then I said, hey, you do that. You're super good, cold buddy. Th that's hilarious, sir. I laughed so hard I cried. I guess he wasn't saluting. He was just wiping tears from his eyes. They make a good pair. Detectives in there look pretty busy. Just imagine right now, behind those doors, a police drama in action. Somehow the thought fails to excite me. Mr. Wright, do you know why patrol cars are painted black and white? No idea. Why? Well, I think they're designed after a panda. A panda? No, they have scientific proof. It's just a theory. Um, do you mind me asking how you come up with that theory? It was when I was on the school trip, I saw a patrol car and it came to me. We, just, we had just been at the zoo, see? What about zebras? Or did they not have those at your zoo? I always get excited when I come to a police station. Why is that? Just feels like I'm jumped into a movie. Huh? You know, with all the police and criminals. Well, well, I don't know if this is all that exciting. Sure it is. Look at those two officers over there. They're probably talking about the latest bust. Funny, I thought they were talking about the weather. The usual wanted posters are hanging up on the bulletin board here. Do you know this space? If you do, dial 911. You know, Mr. Wright, I've always thought it was kind of funny. I've never seen anyone who looked like the people in these posters. They hardly even look human. She has a point. Detective, here's my attorney's badge. She shows to me every time we meet, pal. Real men show their police badge. Enough said. I wish I had a badge. Even an ID card would be nice. Wait, speaking of ID cards, I found that detective's card, didn't I? I'm uh, Detective Gumshoe, what can you tell me about this, huh? Hey pal, this is a detective's ID card. You can't just keep that, you have to turn it into the police. It's people like you that get me into so much trouble all the time. I mean, Detective Gumshoe must drop his card a lot. Hmm, let's see, Bruce Goodman. Goodman? Sounds familiar. Nah, my mistake. But didn't you work to- Whoa, now I remember. Bruce Goodman. He's the victim. That's what I thought. Can you tell us more about it? Did I just accidentally skip something? Or did that just go so fast I didn't get to see it? I can't really tell which one it was. Hey, that's it. That's the King of Prosecutors Award that Mr. Edgeworth got yesterday. Were you at the award ceremony, Detective Gumshoe? Of course, pal. I got an award for diligence myself. Uh, congratulations. I was wondering why it's the award shield. And why is it broken? Oh, there's a reason. Um, I'll tell you what it is later. Apparently he's forgotten. But I was proud of Mr. Edgeworth for winning that award. Even with all the naysayers in the prosecutor's office. Naysayers? Must be because of the rumours. Found in Mr. Edgeworth's car, stabbed with... Found in Mr. Edgeworth's car, stabbed with Mr. Edgeworth's knife. Huh. What would drive Chief Prosecutor's guy to do such a thing? Well, wait, I didn't mean... I mean, sure, of course, someone else really did it. Someone who must have, um, someone who must have a grudge against Mr. Edgeworth. The car and the knife do seem a little well, or too well organized to be a coincidence. Poor Mr. Edgeworth, what could have happened? We have to find out a little more about what's going on with Edgeworth. Why is it always Edgeworth? 
Found in Mr. Edgeworth's car. Stop it, Mr. Wait, no. Did I not read for the one? Yeah, it was just the same thing, alright. As a detective, I have to keep my mouth shut on that one. I know better than to go barbing about things I don't know about. He doesn't know that, though. He doesn't, though. No, I wouldn't want you to do that either. Good. Alright. I'll give you one more word of advice, pal. You better not agree to defend a suspect in this case. What? Well, why not? Huh? Well, it's just that the chief prosecutor has confessed to the crime. She says she summoned a detective to the prosecutor's office and she killed him. But what if she's not telling the truth? Yes, well, no. Come on, pal. There's plenty of evidence against her. But, but what if the evidence was fake? Hey, pal, can I speak to you for a second? Huh? Me? Why is this little girl so peeved at me? She's a relative of the suspect. She's Lana Sky's sister. Well, the chief prosecutor's little sister? Just please investigate this case carefully, okay? Scientifically. Yes, sir. Oh, by the way, you might want to keep your voices down. You don't want to be overheard using words like faked. Huh? It's just, it's a sensitive issue with us these days. So, what are you doing here, Detective Gumshoe? Me? Oh, well, nothing, really. They kicked me out of criminal affairs. Detective Gumshoe, what did you do this time? What do you mean, this time? Then what happened? I know things are busy right now. I mean, with my sister's case and all. It's true. We've never had a chief prosecutor murder anyone before. Only the highest rank people are being let into the criminal affairs now. The lowest ranking guy in there is our chief of detectives. They're not letting any of us rank and file detectives in at all. None of you? I know this is an important trial, but isn't that a little odd? So anyway, I thought I'd spend the day getting the badger dance down pat. Um, isn't there anything else you could be doing? The chief of police himself is directing this investigation, pal. And Officer Marshall has assi was assigned to the underground parking lot. Officer Marshall. Now that I think about it, Emma did seem to know that Marshall guy. A patrolman in charge of a crime scene. It's unheard of, pal. So, this ID card belongs to the victim. He was a detective, like myself. Detective Bruce Goodman. Hmm. The only thing is strange. I mean, why would the victim's ID card be lying on the ground where we, were, we found it? Well, Detective Goodman should have been in the police department yesterday. There was an evidence transferal for a case he handled two years ago. Evidence transferal? Mr. Edgeworth mentioned that too. But Detective Goodman was killed at the prosecutor's office. Well, that's the thing. It's hard to say this, but word is that Chief Prosecutor Sky called him out there to the parking lot, and Lana's confessing as much. He's in a tough spot again. Again? Well, it all started with the murder of the defense attorney, Hammond. But Mr. Edgeworth was found innocent. Listen, pal, there have always been rumors about Mr. Mr. Edgeworth forging evidence, making deals with witnesses. Nothing outright, but there were always whispered rumors. Ever since he was accused of murder, no one's whispering, they're practically shouting. But, but there's no evidence against him. But Mr. Edgeworth has always had unusually strong ties to the department higher-ups. It's only natural that people would be suspicious. I had no idea he was under the gun. Anyway, this latest case has started a new rumour. People say the only reason he took this case is because he's aiming for the chief prosecutor's position himself. What? what? But I know the truth, pal. Nobody wants to be the one who has to prosecute the chief prosecutor. Mr. Edgeworth is biting the bullet on this one. He's doing this for all of us. And that's all I know about that. I'm not officially on the case, you know. Thank you. Why aren't you handling the case, Detective Gumshoe? We met the guy who is... Who is? What was his name? The guy in the parking lot. That'd be Officer Marshall. He was appointed directly by the Chief of Police. Officer Marshall. Is he some kind of Wild West Sheriff or something? No, Jake Marshall's just a regular officer. From West LA. For a moment there, I wasn't sure. Look, pal, let me try to make things a little easier for you. Show them this and I'll let you examine the crim crime scene, maybe. I'd be surprised if this gets us anywhere. Just act like you're supposed to be there. Nobody will look at you twice, pal. That has worked with him in the past. All right, let's go back here. Prosecutor's office, underground parking lot. Looks like the investigation is still going. I have to be getting back to the shop. Sorry, looks like I'll be stuck in this pit till the sun sleeps. I'll see you in my dreams tonight then, baby. Oh, still here? Uh, hello. 
Well, the surprise looks. Didn't I mention? I've got a boyfriend in criminal affairs too. What happened to the security guard? Hey, what's wrong, Bambina? You're looking like a doggy that's lost its herd. Jake Marshall, strange guy to put in charge of a crime scene. Would you mind reading this for me? What's this? I warn you, final letters to me go right in the sp spittoon. It's a letter of introduction from Detective Gumshoe. May we investigate? Gumshoe, are that old cow dog? Hmm. He holding a birthday party or something, huh? Look what it should say, letter of introduction. It says invitation. Ah, I think he just miswrote it. Wait, why am I getting all defensive here? No worries, this proves it's from Detective Gumshoe better than a blood test. Guess I'd be I'd better let you in then. So thank you, Officer Marshall. That's right, he's a patrolman, not a detective. Which reminds me, hey wait a sec. Isn't a crime scene supposed to be handled by a detective or hire? Well folks. The clues are calling. Welcome to our gold strike. Be like the settlers, strike up the lands unknown. Manifest destiny. Let's have a hoot and nanny. Note to self, police investigations like settling land. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you say? I say I won't be needing this anymore. Right. Do I have anything else I could do? I can. Officer Marshall, could you tell us more about the victim? Good men always die young. Remember that, partner. Um, could you be a little more specific? Bruce Goodman, he was a detective, right? Well, well, aren't you a feasty doggy there? Detective Goodman was stabbed here at 5.15. The smiling Madonna told me the tale. I think he means the witness, Miss Angel Star. One stab to the chest, a fine piece of work. This here's the autopsy report. Nice. Was my sister involved with the victim in any way? Funny you should mention that, Bambina. Chief Pros Prospector Sky and Detective Goodman had nothing in common at all. Nothing in common? They apparently worked together on a case a few years back, so there's no motive. Goodman wasn't a particularly gifted detective. That's one reason why he didn't do much work with the chief prosecutor. But my sister called the victim here on the day of the murder, right? Here to this parking lot. So it seems, like calling an unarmed man to a short shootout at noon. High noon. Um, I don't mean any offence, but Officer Marshall, you're a patrolman, right? Not a detective. You call me out? They shoot you for that in Texas. Huh? I was one of them fancy shoe detectives till two years ago to tell you the truth. Oh really? Now he tells me. But you're a patrolman now, so how can you be in charge of a crime scene? Nothing gets by you, does it, Bambina? So why are you in charge? No reason. We're just short on hands right now. We're keeping an eye out in the meantime. That's odd, though. Detective Gumshoe was saying he had nothing to do, nothing important at least. He's nothing but a sad old cow dog, can't find his tail. Maybe it's because he runs with that Edgeworth, eh? Edgeworth? That cow dog's been kicked out of his cattle run by order of the chief of police. Just he don't realise it yet. Detective Gumshoe kicked out of the investigation. Alright, let me... Let me actually press the right button this time. I want to look at this. This looks like a cell phone. Scientific analysis which suggests this belongs to the victim. I can't think of anyone else it could belong to. What's so scientific about that? Should we check it out? Yes! Right, let's check it out. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, I'm not doing that. They did that. Hmm, this phone's still on. This phone's still on the redial screen. Redial? Um, Mr. Wright, most phones keep a record of all the calls you've made and received. You just press the blue button to display the last number you called. Convenient, isn't it? I'm surprised you didn't know about it. Sorry to disappoint you, but even I know about things like redial, huh? Oh, I'm sorry. It's just you never know with people from your generation. Whatever, let's check this phone out. Now to see who the owner of the- See who the owner of this phone called last. Note to self, defense attorney doesn't think fast, he just pushes the button. Hey, that song, I know that. Hey, what's going on over there? Beep. Ah, oh, so sorry. I see you, partner. 
You pressed redial on that there phone, didn't you? Oh, uh, well, yeah. Whose phone is this anyway? It was on the ground over there. Whose is it? That belonged to Chief Prospect Sky. What? It's my sister's? She apparently dropped it when she was taken into custody right after the crime. Look, the last call was made right when the murder occurred. It looks like she was fixing to call someone, except she only spoke for a few seconds according to this. Who did she call? No idea. Sorry, partner. Now I've got a question for you, partner. I heard a phone ring just now. One of those newfangled ring tunes. Oh, that. Oh. I'm sorry, that was my phone. What? 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 Your phone? Yeah, it's kind of strange, but someone called me right as we picked up the other phone. A wrong number. I hope you're not lying. They shoot you for that in Texas, partner. Uh-oh, I've incited the wrath of the Lone Star Patrolman. This appears to be the car where the body was found. It looks like the lock on the trunk is busted. The crime took place in the underground parking lot at the prosecutor's office. The body was found in the trunk of my soul born in its car. Quite a luxury car. It just screams I have money to burn. Yeah, prosecutors get the big bucks. What's this? Looks like a note of some sort. Look, someone's written on it. You're right, let's see. Seven, oh, six, seven S, twelve of the second. There's a name printed on the paper above that. Good name. Maybe it fell out of his pocket when he was killed. Well, so, what does it mean, Mr. Wright? How am I supposed to know? Note to self, for deductive reasoning, go to Edgeworth, not Wright. I'm sure Edgeworth would know what this means, e wouldn't know what this means either. This rope, is it? Yep. They laid it in the outline of the victim's body. So wait, the victim must have died when the killer comes to trunk on him. You have to- you have got to be the only person I know that will come to that conclusion. What else have I got? B-block is through there. That's where visitors park. I can see the Lunchland car over there, far in the distance. Hey, you're right. I like the cute design on the door. I can see a cartoon cow munching down on a juicy looking steak. Doesn't that strike you as a little creepy? Just don't think too deeply about it and you'll be fine. A block, this is an area reserved for prosecutors. Defense attorneys are relegated to B block. I dream of the day when I'll be able to park my car here. I'll go over to B block to buy my hamburgers from you, Mr. Wright. I'm not planning on giving up my job that soon. I thought he was. I, I genuinely thought he had given up already. You know? Is that it? That might just be it. So, there's no connection between Detective Goodman and my sister. That's correct, but there's a gold mine of evidence against her. And the pros prospectus tomorrow was none other than Edgeworth himself. I'm afraid your sister's fate is decided, Bambina. My many condolences. Officer Marshall. Yeah, Bambina? How can you say that? You and my sister, you were... Is there something between this cop and her sister that I don't know about? I apologise, Bambina. Something must have gotten to me. Maybe it's that dirty wind that's blowing through the prospector's office. Dry wind or ill will. Some someone's up to something here, but who? Suspicions about Mr. Edgeworth have been flying around for nearly two years now. Forged evidence and arranging testimonies to me. He was unbeatable because... Welcome back, Wood. How was the meeting? He was unbeatable because, unbeatable because he did whatever it took to win. Unbeatable, that is, until he met you. But rumours are just rumours, aren't they? These are prosecutors we're talking about. Evidence is everything to them. If you follow the rumours about Edgeworth to their source, you find one person. But they're off limits. Untouchable, you might say. One person? Who? Hate to say this, but your sister, Bambina. Chief Prospector, Lana Sky. What? My sister? Edgeworth couldn't rustle all those cattle by himself. Some people load their guns with bullets, some people load them with deals. What are you saying, Edgeworth? What, you, what? You're saying Edgeworth was making deals to win trials? Well, there's gunshots, there's bound to be bullets. That's what the old timers say. There's a big old secret hidden around here somewhere. Everyone knows it. Is that why Detective Gumshoe was taken off the case? Did they target him because he was closest to Edgeworth? So, well, how are we doing, Mr. Wright? 
I guess we've got some clues. We have an autopsy report, a note from the victim, and a cell phone. So you think we'll be okay? Well, the only thing still bothering me is that Lana's confessing to the crime. She says she did it. No problem. I can guarantee that she's not the criminal. Oh, by the way, Emma. Yes? I know that song your phone plays when it rings. What? It's a still samurai theme song, isn't it? That popular TV show for kids. The phone that rang earlier wasn't mine, it was yours. At 5.18, 5, just after the murder took place, your sister called you, didn't she, Emma? I... I'm sorry. Can you tell me what you talked about? I... She hung up right away. I see. The detective is murdered, and the suspect is the top prosecutor in the district. I've got a bad feeling about this. Like, maybe I still don't know everything that went on here. I'm very happy it wasn't Gumshoe that got killed. I was very worried for the longest time that it was Gumshoe that got killed. February 23rd, 9.34am. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. How did the investigation go, Mr. Wright? Frankly, there's still a lot of grey areas. Or rather, the whole thing is one big grey area. Don't worry about me, no matter what the outcome. I'm ready to accept my fate. I believe in you, sis. Mr. Wright, let me offer you a word of advice, yes? A defense attorney should never believe their client. The defendant is called to trial because they are suspected of wrongdoing. Never forget that. Miss Guy, you, you remind me a lot of Mia. But there's one decisive difference between you and her. And that is, you're not a defense attorney. I believe it's almost time for the trial. Good luck, Mr. Wright. Yeah, because isn't that the absolute opposite of what Mia told us? Welcome back, Ward. Uh, Ward is? I already said welcome back, Ward. Welcome back, Dogma. You're up. Nice. How long have you got to work? Two hours? Fair. Is it complete opposite? Yeah, I thought so. I remember, guys. I remember. Don't get scared? <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you for the gifted sub to Phoenix. Don't get scared again! I messed it up! What's going on? <laughs> That's not lucky at all! Thank you for the gifts up to Dogma! You don't have to, but thank you very much, I appreciate it. So I'm taking a break when I eat my Twix. I'm like, which recap is in, guys? It's Bob Hawk. Hey, you were watching me last night. You know how many points I have now.
Detective Boy. I think I have like 300 and something dogma after what I did last night. I'm sorry I abandoned you as well. I wanted to go to bed. And then like I went to the toilet and come back and saw you still in the voice chat and was going to come back online. And it was like, actually, I just really want to go to bed at this point. Akbar. Barak. How's it going, buddy? Thank you for the one bitty. How was driving today? Or oh, your first lot of driving? Because you've got two lots, haven't you? You said you'd come and see me in the middle. Pretty good. Nice, nice. You never let you leave? You did nothing? I mean, I guess you got paid for doing nothing. I mean, that's dumb on their behalf. I've eaten my Twix now. My first trial without a Fey helping me. No one's gonna bail me out this time. Boobies! I'll be alone in there. So I have to discover the truth all by myself. Oh god. Let's do it, Mr. Wright. I'll be with you the whole way. I like glasses, to be fair. So I didn't do anything. You see, that's why my place used to just send us home. If there wasn't much to do, they were like, right, save money, send them home. They don't get paid just to do nothing. They're going home. Court is now in session for the trial of Miss Lana Sky. Defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution has been ready for a while, Your Honor. Edgeworth. It's been two months, but I haven't been in a courtroom since this trial. <laughs> I hope that personal feelings will not be part of the proceedings today, Mr. Wright. I will choose the path I think is right, regardless of what those around me might say. The judgment to be made here is in our hands, not those of anyone else. Very well, Mr. Edgeworth. The opening statement, please. Chief Prosecutor, Lana Sky has committed an unpardonable crime. Not only this, but she has, was rash... Bleh, bleh, bleh. Let's start again. Not only this, but she was rash enough to commit it in the prosecutor's office law. Wow, he's much more forceful in person. I suddenly feel like confessing to everything. However, she will now pay for her rashness with her life. There was a witness to her crime, a professional witness. Well then, call your first witness, Miss Edgeworth. The prosecution calls his first witness, Miss Angel Star, to the stand. The cough-up queen. They pay pretty well. I'm happy they pay well. You got paid well to do fuck all. Hmm, haven't I seen you somewhere? You ordered the caviar lunch, right? Ho ho, caviar. I've never eaten caviar before. The judge is really wolfing it down. And for you, I have a fiesta bowl. Uh, thanks. Well, the witness state her name and profession. Ah, and you, sir. Did you order the fingerprint lunch box? It is too early for lunch. Your name and profession, please. Well, Your Honor, how does it taste? So this is why everyone raves about caviar. It's so tasty, it hurts. I always thought caviar would taste like pickled tapioca. What the heck does pickled tapioca taste like? Name, profession, now. Me? The name is Angel Star. Don't go forgetting it. I find myself running Lunchland these days. Is that what you wanted me to say, Mr. Edgeworth? Very well, witness. Please describe the incident to us. Hey, Sean. How's it going? You still ended up tired? I find sometimes when you do fuck all, you end up tired anyway. Like, there, there's a perfect balance not to get tired, and it's hard not to overwork yourself, or just to do nothing and get tired. The prosecution will wait. I'm not finished eating. Hurry it up. Hmm. Very well, Mr. Edgeworth. As you know, we usually call on the police to provide a description of the crime. Your Honor, as Mr. Edgeworth said to the court, I am a professional. Uh, huh. What exactly does that mean? Until two years ago, Miss Angel Star was a special investigator with the police. She was a first-rate homicide detective. W what? Miss Star was a detective? Ah ha! Uh, I know who you are. Cough up, cough up, Queen Angel Star, Your Honor. Long time no see. 
very well. You, you may continue with the description, Miss Star. Just who is this lady? If I might have the court's attention over here. It's going well. It's going well. We're only eight people away from 500, Sean. We are basically at 500. But we've only got like two weeks to get 500 for the party stream. So we need the eight people. The parking lot at the prosecutor's office is divided into two blocks. A block is for the prosecutor's office personnel. B block is for visitors and clients. A chain, divi a chain divider separates the two blocks. I suppose that's to keep visitors from taking up prosecutor spaces, yes? The crime took place by a car in the back of A block in the car's trunk. The killer stabbed the victim with this knife and went to drive the body out. Unfortunately for her, there was a witness and an arrest was made on the spot. And who was this valiant witness? Why, it was me, Your Honour. Witness, did you see the very moment of the crime? Of course, Your Honour. Eight people to do? Exactly. We have to do eight more people. Akbar will leave the doing to you. Immediately after that, I apprehended the chief prosecutor. Hmm. It seems rather cut and dry, doesn't it? Well, Mr. Wright, uh, I can't agree on principle, Your Honour. It seems that some poor losers are unwilling to accept the truth, Your Honour. Shall I proceed to crush what little hope they have remaining? If you can, then give them your worst, Miss Star. Wait, are they talking about me? <laughs> oh my god! Even the judge is like, yeah, fuck him over. Come on, Star. Fuck him over. Wait a minute. That's a lot of doing. Somehow, I always knew a day like this would come. I was on my way to deliver a lunchbox to my boyfriend when I sensed something. Perhaps it was my finely honed detective's intuition at work. Through the wire fence, I saw the chief prosecutor standing next to a garish car. The chief prosecutor was holding a knife in her right hand. And then she thrust the pointy tip of the knife into Detective Goodman's chest. Hmm. Bringing a lunchbox to your boyfriend. How touching. Hmm. As you can see, there's no room for doubt. The key point of your testimony seems to be nothing other than the point of the knife which you saw being stabbed into Detective Goodwin. So, how does it feel to be so utterly crushed? I... I'm still thinking about that. It, it's merely a flesh wound, Mr. Wright. Very well, Mr. Wright. You may cross-examine the witness. Nice, nice Monty Python um, reference there. How did you know? I respect the prosecutor's basic abhorrence of crime, yet their methods are ugly and twisted. Twisted methods will always lead to tragedy. The lunch lady's uninformed opinion is duly noted, given that they are used to erasing inconvenient evidence at their whim. Killing off a detective that knew too much is merely an extension of that. Miss Star, do you have something against yeah. do you have something personal against prosecutors? I felt that I had found my dream job and had become an investigator. And if I hadn't been laid off by those prosecutors over there, I'd still be one. Laid off, she was fired. To me, prosecutors are nothing more than worms. That said, I am a pro, as you know. My testimony is unbiased and flawless. Very well. You may continue, Miss Star. That makes no sense! She sat there literally calling prosecutors worms and shit, and then goes, But, by the way, I am unbiased here? Totally unbiased. That's like if I attempted. That's not lucky at all. Oh, Dogma, thank you so much for the gifts. You don't need to give the sub back. Thank you so much. That means so much to me. Thank you. Prostitutes. It might sound like that with my with the way I speak. And why is it? This is what I like. You weren't here. <laughs> oh my God, Dogma. Thank you so much! Thank you for the gift subs to Hollow Witch and Candle! You didn't need to! I appreciate them very much! Thank you so much! But yes, what I was actually... <laughs> what I was getting there to, in between Dogma being very sweet... Maybe I want to? I appreciate it! Still, spend your skill points, nerd! But, um... 
Why do they have an award for the prosecutor, but none for the defense attorneys? Why in this world is it like prosecutors and police officers are best friends, and defense lawyers are like worms at the bottom of the garden? Because? Just because? Have you actually played Ace Attorney games? Ah. It needs to be an underdog story? I mean, you paid the first bear. This is still the first game. We're at the end of the first game. Very well, you may continue, Miss Star. I don't remember Jack, though, fair. I was one way to live there lunch with my boyfriend. This boyfriend, he's a detective. Not that boyfriend, the security guard. Th that boyfriend, you have several? Yes, this boyfriend, that boyfriend, and the other boyfriend. Care to join? The yet another boyfriend position is still open for applicants. I wish I could be this one. I, I want a that boyfriend and this boyfriend, and I want them all to be dumb. I want them to be dumb nerds. I want a group of dumb nerds that just follow me around. Except the important case. Was that the one before this? The one where Edgeworth was on trial? Oh, stick with the lunches, thanks. Note to self, but just have to think before applying. The security guard room is in the lot. In A block. Except the important case. Yeah, that's the one before this. It's up on the second level, so you can see everything from there. That would be the room with the security sign. Incidentally, did you bring your lunchboxes by car? Since I'm a visitor now, I parked in B block. So, she was in B block when she witnessed the crime. When I sensed something, perhaps it was my finally home detective's initial intuition at work. Hold it. You sensed something, so you're saying you had a premonition of the murder. It felt like, how do you say? Oh yes, it was like the feeling you get when you view a pumpkin chock full of seeds. I have no idea what that means. Speaking of the detective's intuition, wasn't the victim Mr. Bruce Goodman also a detective? Yes, well, he was like a young cheese. A uh, young cheese? A pale white cheese, not yet tangy with experience on the streets. A greenhorn. Hmm. And it must be hard, yellowed, and sharp as a tack. <laughs> you are not sharp as a tack, Judge. You are definitely not. From it, we forgot the crack. Exactly. Oh yeah, that's the point, Sean. Let me know when you have a free day. I, I mean, obviously it's coming up to Christmas, so it might be in January. But let me know when you're free so we can do some, um... Balheim. Your son is sitting on the toilet on the... Is he on the toilet or is he just sat on it? Yeah, with the odour of an old cheese to match. In any case, there, there in the lot, I felt something stirring in the back of my mind. Through the wire fence, I saw the chief prosecutor standing next to a garish car. By garish, you mean... Mr. Edgeworth's car, yes. M Mr. Edgeworth's? Incidentally, the knife with which the victim was stabbed was also Mr. Edgeworth's, wasn't it? Yeah, indeed it was. He thinks his time is hilarious! Oh god! What an odd case this is. And the person you saw, you are sure it was a defendant. I saw her from no further than 30 feet away. I am certain it was her. If she's telling the truth, we're doomed. Let's just do what we can. Even if we don't have any proof, we can always nitpick. Witness, in your testimony, you clearly stated the following. Prosecutors are nothing more than worms. Ergo, you are a biased witness. You might want to keep those silly opinions to yourself in the future, rookie. Huh? Rookie? Unless you're willing to risk the consequences of doubting me. I'll fry you like a fritter. Crispy on the outside, chewy on the inside. That, that was inspiring. I believe I've heard that tagline elsewhere. You could cr cry plagiarism. I may be relegated to the lowly post of lunch lady, but my instincts are honed. Uh, a photograph? You took this? The moment I witnessed the crime, my reflexes took over and snap. I took a picture. In fact... One of my lunchboxes is rigged with a camera. I suppose that's more exciting than just hanging it around your neck. Witness, why am I only seeing this photograph just now? You think I'd show it to you, a prosecutor? Think again. My boyfriend works in the photography division of criminal affairs. Well, this is most certainly the defendant. 
fantastic. Childhood innocence, I miss it. Oh God, he'll learn. In years to come, Hawk, he will learn. The older you get, the more you realize you don't want that kind of pain in your ass, you know? Uh-oh, that is unmistakably Land Sky. So what was the defendant doing at the time? The chief prosecutor was holding a knife in her right hand. Tell me more about this knife that the suspect was carrying. Well, I'd say the blade is about four inches long. Is that right, Mr. Edgeworth? It is your knife after all. Uh, uh -huh. yes, that's about right. Prosecutors are, by nature, well versed in the location of a man's vital organs. I'm sure it was easier than boiling an egg from my egg salad surprise set. Yet you can't testify as to her ability to kill an egg. I mean, a person. <laughs> Sounds like just enough. It's not about the size, it's what you do with it. Hmm, perhaps a chicken side set would have been a better metaphor. So the defendant was holding a knife. What then? Then she thrust the pointy tip of the knife into Detective Goodman's chest. Tell the court why you didn't try to stop this crime. You did see her raise the knife to strike, no? Hmm, the defense has a point. Unfortunately, by the time I realized what was going on, it was already too late. Too late? Yes. The next moment, the chief prosecutor brought down the murder weapon. I, I see. It's only a flesh wound, Mr. Wright. We can take it. You said that before. Anything else? Scientifically speaking, Miss Star's testimony is false. Sounds pretty fatal to me. Well, what do we do? Is this it? Is my sister guilty? Let's just keep our heads cool and press the witness a bit, shall we? For some reason, having her panicking, having her panicking next to me makes me calmer. So don't smile like that. Right. Right. What? What do I have? What do I have? Let me have a look at what I've got. Let me not press the wrong button. I can check this. Well, this is what we got. This is what we've just got. So I feel this is the evidence that in that's important, right? This is going to be the important evidence. That's the full plan. Cell phone's gonna do nothing. That's gonna have nothing to do with her testimony. Uh, I haven't read this yet. 36 mil. Between 4 and 530. Lots of blood from chest wound. We're just caught by a 4.5 inch knife, a single stab. Well, that's close enough to what she said, so it doesn't really matter. I feel it's gonna be something to do with this. Uh. Bench. She's not holding a knife in this picture, though. Objection! And you witnessed this. You saw Miss Guy stab the victim with the knife. As I've already said, yes. I swear it on my finest salmon swirl lunch. Hmm, I'm sure that's a fine lunch. But isn't that odd? Look at this photograph. This is the photograph you took at the very moment of the crime, is it not? And why is Miss Guy not holding a knife? Um, Mr. Edgeworth, your thoughts? Objection. <laughs> Objection? Objection? Maybe? Question mark? I like how pathetic this objection is. It's like he didn't really want to object to something. Objection. Just objection. That had to be the weakest objection ever, Edgeworth. Yet it was still stronger than your ever feeble mind, Mr. Wright. What do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? This photograph was not taken a moment before the stabbing. This was taken a moment after the stabbing. Uh, and how can you tell that? Blood splatter. Huh? See the dark crimson stain? You know what? I saw the fucking blood. I fucking saw the blood and I still went, well, this is going to be the thing. And the chief prosecutor's coat. But it's a black and white photograph. Ah, yes, it's hard to tell, but this could be blood. Well, Mr. Wright, I see no problem here. No problem, except you. Mr. Wright, you could just sit there and take that kind of abuse. Uh-huh. You got a better idea? 
that am i going to object can i object to that wait that contradicts what the witness said in her testimony namely that she took the picture the moment she witnessed the crime well it seems i was slightly unclear my apologies Th that's it if you run out of lunch you order seconds problem solved if you don't like it try ordering the jumbo sized lunch from the git girl good advice i'm not sure i understood it but good advice i didn't have time to stop her Prosecutor Sky was cold calculating like a robot. She killed without pain or remorse. It was a premedi premeditated murder. Premeditated? How do you know? Look at the chief prosecutor's hands in that photograph. Well, are those gloves? Surgical gloves made of thin rubber, most likely. Why would she have those on? Uh, it was not premeditated. She would not be wearing those gloves. Uh, he figured that out in seconds. He's a genius. I love him. These gloves do seem to tell a tale of premeditation. Premeditated murder. Serious offence. Witness. Add this to your testimony. Murder was planned. The rubber gloves prove it. What if she was just in the habit of wearing gloves, like driving gloves? The gloves were admitted as evidence when the defendant was arrested. They were rubber gloves of the kind used for autopsies. In other words, when the chief prosecutor came to the crime scene, she came to do murder. To do a murder is the only possible conclusion one can make. I love that hat. Would you not love to have a sushi hat? I would fucking adore a sushi hat. Everything was planned. It was a premeditated crime. Uh, impressive. I'm sorry that took you off the... They took you off the force, Miss Star. This is bad. She's got all the thinking. She's got them all thinking this was all planned. She can prove this. Oh my god, I'm struggling to read now. If she can prove this claim, the trial's already over. I've got to think of a way to show that this wasn't premeditated. It's only a flesh wound. Mr. Wright, we can make it. You said that before. Anything else? Sign. Wait, no, yeah. Right, no, I know. But, wait. Wait. Wait, hold on a second. The murder weapon was in the car. How can she premeditate something based on whether or not something's going to be in someone else's car? Right, right. Don't answer that. I will, I will, I will fail on my own if that is the case. But I think I've big brained this. Witness, do you know what this is? Are you trying to test me? I sell lunch boxes for a living, you know. That's a knife. The knife. The knife that was in Mr. Edgeworth's trunk. Indeed, it is my knife. What is this case? Well, defendant is the chief prosecutor for the district, right? Mummy, a prosecutor is bad people. The defense is a request. We ask the witness provide an accurate testimony. What's that, rookie? In your testimony, you state that Lana Sky planned this murder, and that's why she was wearing the special gloves. Seems like a natural conclusion to me. The gloves do indicate planning. However, why would she not also prepare the most important thing, the murder weapon? Oh. This knife just happened to be in the trunk of that car. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're gonna plan a murder, you don't forget the weapon. Uh, uh! Order, order, order! Great, now the tide is turning in our favour. Great show, Mr. Wright. My sister's as good as free. Right. I believe the next lunch you'll be eating is humble pie. What, what? I hope you aren't deluding yourself into thinking that the tide has turned. Not over such a trifling detail. But but this shoots a, shoots a hole in a whole premeditated theory. Bah, the prosecution could care, could care less if it was premeditated or not. The only one who seems to care is that lunch lady over there. The defendant Lana Sky murdered a detective with a knife. That is the only thing the prosecution need prove, prove, nothing else. Very good, Mr. Prosecutor. I suppose you think you're clever now. But you know as well as I do that she planned on killing him. It was planned. If Am I just skipping this by accident? I'm being dumb. I would love to eat that hat. Is she edible? I don't know. She looks like she's a bitter old hag, to be honest. I don't like bitter things. I believe I'd like to hear your testimony again. Witness, please tell us only what you saw, not what you thought. 
How dare you? The powers of deduction are not to be underestimated. Really, now? Lana Sky intended to murder Detective Goodman. She puts the edible incredible. Oh my god. That's why she called the victim all the way to the prosecutor's office. I'm sure the chief prosecutor had a grudge against the victim. Nothing else could drive that human machine to plunge the knife in again and again. Well, that's wrong! Wait! The victim was summoned from the police department to the prosecutor's office. It does sound a lot like premed premeditation, doesn't it? So if I order a pizza, does that mean I'm planning to kill the delivery boy? In any case, the defense may not cross-examine the witness. Wait, no! Like, the only thing I need to know! Wait, no! She's wrong! Like, wait... Can I... Boom. One knife wound! You say she stabbed him again and again, but you couldn't have witnessed that. Are you testing me? Then I'll test you. With my moss surprise. I'm afraid the moss is growing under your feet as we wait, Miss Star. Huh? Well, what do you mean? I shouldn't have to explain this, but take a look. The autopsy report states that death was due to a loss of blood from one stab wound. Aha, you're right. Good show, Mr. Edgeworth. What a hunk. He's my hero, really. I! 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 Was the one that pointed that out? Me! Me! What about my objection? No one noticed? Well, witness? Whose team Edgeworth is on? Edgeworth is on his own team, it seems. You got the crime scene set, right? Uh, oh thanks. I always believed that no one could ever mistake ketchup for blood, but now I realise that such mistakes are impossible. So, you're saying you mistook something for blood? When she lifted her knife, I thought I saw blood at her breast. Splattered blood from her victim. That's why I thought she must have stabbed him at least twice. Then tell us what you saw that you thought was blood. Testify. Her red muffler looked like blood to me. That's how ghastly the whole scene was. Wait. But then... Now she's... Now she's gone against this one, because if she had red sauce on her muffler, that would be what's on there, right? Don't be jealous of a 16-year-old. Uh, uh, she's in the same courtroom as Edgeworth, I'll have you know. And she stood next to my boy, Gumshoe. I'll be as jealous of a 16-year-old as I want. This can't be a euphemism. Uh. Miss Star, I demand an explanation. The witness is clearly not suited for detective work. But what? The suspect was not wearing a scarf or muffler of any kind when she was stabbed. Through the oh wait a minute, yeah, she wasn't wearing one. <laughs> it's her coat that's covered in stuff. Oh my god! And you proved it yourself with this photograph, huh? But but that that can't be. Only a professional lunch lady could be so utterly clueless. Congratulations, perhaps you finally found your true calling in life. Hmm, harsh words, but good. In the end, Mr. Edgeworth prevails. What was my objection? Chopped liver? But, but, it was there. A scar. No, not that. But something red. Really? Well, now where, where were we? The witness has given us an entertaining interlude, but back to business. W what? Very well, witness. Continue your testimony. You saw the crime and apprehended the suspect. Tell us about that. Very well. I do remember some things accurately, at least. Ultimately, we couldn't shake the most important part of her testimony. The most important part. The part where your sister stabs the victim. This next testimony might just be the moment of truth. See you later, Ah. Good luck with the driving. Remember, take it slowly. Don't get ahead of yourself. After the murder, the suspect attempted to run behind a partition up to her side. I quickly caught her, explaining her rights to her, and arrested her on the spot. Ah yes, when I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. That's what had me confused in my earlier testimony. The chief prosecutor had made to escape, but again saying she star, resistance is futile. Resistance is futile. 
You are quite determined about the scarf, aren't you? I strike like a snake and bite like a cobra. That's me, Angel Star. That wasn't a very good metaphor. First of all, a cobra is a kind of snake. Don't bother me with details unless you want to get bitten. N no thanks. Note to self, Mr. Wright is weak against poisonous snake bites. The chief prosecutor tried to resist, but her efforts were in vain. She knocked my hands aside, kicked over an oil drum. Uh, an oil drum? Hard to imagine. Oh, she's beautiful, but deadly. A predator, this one. A leopard woman. Roar. Very well, Mr. Wright. Cross-examination, if you will. Right, let's have a look. Let's overtake yourself as soon as possible. Maybe not on the road, though, Candle. One day you will see the full force of Akbar, and just the thought of him in a car would terrify you, even as a Finnish person. So, where's this partition on the floor plans? I'm sure she means this wall next to the car. That's right. There was a wall there, about six feet high. She was obviously trying to hide herself. Quite a natural thing for a criminal to do. And what did you do then? I quickly caught her, explained her rights to her, and arrested her on the spot. You say quickly. Were you close to the suspect? As I just said, I was only 30 feet away from her the whole time. Hmm. Maybe I should press her for more details. Do I? Maybe? I'd like to see this on a floor plan, just to be safe. The lunch land car was... She was a visitor. That she was parked in B block. She witnessed the murder from here. That would make it about 30 feet from the car, yes? Is that correct, Miss Star? Y yes, that's right. But there was a chain link fence in front of you. I went over it, of course. Amazing. The cough up Queen Lunch Lady Athlete, indeed. It would have taken her a little time to climb over the fence. She couldn't have gotten to my sister that fast. Yeah, that fence was about 9 feet high, too. So how did Miss Guy not get away? She jumped in the car. Ah, oh, yes, when I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. She mentioned the muffler. What exactly did she say? If I remember exactly, I would have told you in my testimony. Cheeky. Anyway, all I heard her say was the word muffler. Just that one word. So, what you heard wasn't the suspect talking to you, but to someone else. Yes, the chief prosecutor was talking on her phone. Her phone? She can't mean... By phone, do you mean... This cell phone discovered at the crime scene? Yes, ultimately. Ultimately? My memory. It's like a salmon heading upstream, you see? Then no, the court doesn't see the star. The chief prosecutor first attempted to use the phone hanging on the wall. On the wall? That's right. Near the car, there was an emergency phone on the wall. Apparently it was out of order, and so she used her cell phone. Indeed, the emergency phone was out of order that day. Hmm. Good witnessing, witness. Good witnessing? Whatever happened to good testifying? You should of course add this to your testimony. The things I do to please this rookie defense attorney. I saw it all. She how she tried how she tried to phone on the wall, but had to use her cell instead. Um, do you think you could restate your testimony for the court? Aha! I was going to ask the same thing. I'll only say this one time, so listen close, rookies. The chief prosecutor stabbed a victim and ran behind a partition. And she picked up the emergency phone on the wall, but it was out of order. So she pulled her own cell phone out of her pocket. And during that time, you climbed up the chain link fence. Then when I boldly grabbed her arm, the chief prosecutor hung up her phone. And you saw her doing this. What is it, Mr. Wright? Chief prosecutor made to escape, but against ancient star resistance is futile. Wait. Wait. Wait a minute. Right. I want to look at it. So, she wants us to believe that from, like, over here, she managed to get over a wire fence and to the victim, or they're not the victim, they're not the victim, to the person, to Lana, 
in this moment. Her phone was found by the car though, wasn't it? Not by the wall. Miss Star, I have to conclude that you have a personal grudge against Miss Lana Sky. The witness is a former detective. Her testimony is unmarked by personal bias. Well, who would have thought you would be my knight in shining armor prosecutor? You who, together with the chief prosecutor, kicked me out two years ago. Well, Miss Star, this is a fatal contradiction with your testimony. How do you explain this? Huh, I don't know what you're talking about. Mess with me, and I'll make you cough it all up. Ahem, uh -huh. let's look at the four plans. You said you witnessed the crime from this position. However, if that's true, you couldn't possibly have seen Miss Guy making that phone call. I believe you see what, you, what I'm getting at. The emergency phone was on the back side of this petition. If indeed you were in B block, you couldn't have seen it. What? what? Order, order, where's the meaning of this? It's simple, Your Honor. She's not coughing up blood, she's coughing up lie. Ugh. That's quite a claim, Mr. Wright. Perhaps you will allow me a question. Tell us exactly what lie was this witness has told the court. Here's where the court attacks him. Yeah. Here's where the counterattack begins. I can't afford to get this wrong. The witness lied about what she saw, where she saw it, or the order of events. Oh. I don't think it's the order of events. I feel like she's made it up. But I feel like what we're proving is that she didn't see it, right? So... One of these two. I don't feel like we've got enough to prove that she didn't see it. But we can prove that she didn't see what she saw, where it was, if you get what I'm saying, in a long way. The order of events is pointless. Because she's explained it in the way it would have gone. I'm going with that one. This guy tried to use the emergency phone, but it was out of order. What is significant about this fact? Nothing. Therefore, it would be pointless for Miss Star to lie about it. Pointless to lie, I see. But say the witness did actually see Miss Sky using the emergency phone, it would mean Miss Star witnessed the crime from a different location. A different location? Now that's a pointless lie if ever I've heard one. Before you call my lie pointless, at least let me tell it. Let me ask a question to our clever wordsmith, Mr. Wright. Just where was the witness when she saw the crime? All the testimony we've heard until now points in one direction. The place from where Miss Star witnessed this crime was here. In a security room, right? Because she would have been there with her boyfriend, right? And she could see the phone, and she'd see over the partition. But how did she get the picture, though? It would have to be the security room, though. But she got a picture from down here. This is the only place where she could have been. The security guard room? Indeed, the security room in the underground parking lot is well positioned. It's built on the second floor so you can see the entire lot. Hmm. She would have been able to see the emergency phone from there. But why there? There are many other places where she could have seen the phone. Not in this case, Your Honor. The witness not being part of the prosecutor's office could park, couldn't park in A block. The only place where she could have seen the crime and the back of the partition is here. I remember in your testimony you said you brought a lunch to your boyfriend in the security guard room, yes? Well, Miss Star? How many years have I been getting the better of men to think that the tables could be turned? Today a man has got the better of Angel Star. Order, order, witness. What have you done? You used to be a detective. You should know better. I'm not turning back. The guilty will be punished. Now do what I must to make sure justice prevails. The guilty. Is she talking about Miss Sky? And Mr. Wright, doesn't this strike you as odd? 
Why did Miss Star lie? It doesn't make sense. Huh? She could have just said she saw the crime from the security guard station. It wouldn't change anything. Exactly. This photograph tells all. It was the defendant who stabbed the victim. That truth still stands. It still stands? I disagree, Mr. Edgeworth. W what? If a witness is found to be lying, they're guilty of perjury. She knows this. She wouldn't risk that without a good reason. So tell us what her reason was, Mr. Wright. Huh. M me Who else? Mr. Wright, let's review what we know. Miss Dar witnessed the crime from the security guard station. But she lied and said she was saw it from B Block. It must make a vital difference, but what? What would change? It's an anagram of a strangler? It is! Because no witnesses have ever lied before. Definitely not in this game, ever. I've never seen anyone lying in this game. Distance? She's further away. It changes the distance between her and the scene of the crime. My condolences, Mr. Wright, but one look at the floor plans and it's quite clear. The distance between the scene of the crime and the guard station is 30 feet. I don't see how that would change what she could see. What she saw is not in question here. What matters is the time it would take her to reach the scene of the crime. Miss Starr, you witnessed the crime from the security guard station. Now how long did it take you to go from there to the scene of the crime where you arrested Miss Sky? Well, witness, you... Y yes Scooby, you ordered the squid wheels, right? The quality of my lunches has just gone from low to inedible. I was bringing a PB&J lunch with fresh boysenberry jam for my boyfriend. Hmm, boysenberry for the boyfriend. He wasn't in the station, so I waited. I witnessed the crime from the glass walled station. And before I knew what I was doing, I found myself running towards the scene. But the door was locked, I couldn't open it. Oh my god, she would have taken forever to get there. That's why I had to go through the visitors' parking and be block. That's quite a detour. It probably took me at least five minutes to get to the scene of the crime. But for five minutes? Hmm, this changes things considerably. But it was that woman over there in the defendant's chair who stabbed him. I know it, I have photographic evidence. I swear it. I swear it on my finest plastic spork. You have a point, and the spork is a wonderful invention. Would you like another caviar lunch? Absolutely. Uh-oh. Mr. Wright, you have to do something. Do I have any evidence to stop this? We've got to do something! Five minutes between the witnessing of the murder and the arrest. Think about it. You can make pasta in that amount of time. If you like it al dente. I've got lunch boxes that tie pasta into knots, rookie. A five minute blank, isn't that strange? Strange? If you were a criminal, what would you do with five minutes, Your Honor? Well, um, I guess I'd flee the scene. Hey, d don't get the wrong idea. I didn't kill anyone. But you have the instincts of a killer. You would run, but this time was different. Miss Guy dwelled at the scene of the crime. She even had her picture taken. No true criminal would act this way. It's inconceivable. Yeah. Yeah. I like her boots, to be fair. Well then, it seems you've come to the end of this testimony. The witness has a grudge against the defendant and a blank in a testimony. Mr. Edgeworth is the next witness ready to go. Unfortunately, I appear to have overestimated this witness and accounted for professional history. We did it. We screwed that can, can shut. Though that said that cunt shut then. Mr. Wright, that, that was too close. I'm afraid that the cough up queen has been dethroned, and with that, court is adjourned. Mr. Edgeworth, you ordered the squid wheels, right? That's the one she tried to foist off on me. I prefer to not take the defense team's leftovers. Anything else to say? I might be able to save you. I have decisive evidence. Well, what was that? Is this another one of her trick lunch boxes? My apologies, but we have no further questions to ask of you, Miss Star. Ah. 
Is this your jumble lunchbox? Woohoo! A triple decker! Our deference to the witness's determination. I'll allow one more testimony. He just wants lunch! Let's hear about the decisive evidence. Like the lunch land model says, she won't be disappointed. What's she going to pull out for her lunchbox this time? I should have mentioned those five minutes when I wasn't looking at the crime scene. And now, to the matter of the victim's shoe. Did I not bring this up? Two types of blood were found on this shoe. One was, of course, the victim's, and the other blood type matched that of the defendant, Miss Lana Skye. This shoe proves it. It's flawless, decisive evidence. Well, what? There was blood found on that shoe? Try lunchland for all your lunches and decisive evidence needs. Witness, what's the meaning of this? Why is this the first time I've heard of this evidence? Simple, as I've already said, I don't trust you with evidence, Mr. Edgeworth. That's why I took the liberty of investigating this myself. And you had blood tests performed. Did I mention? I have three boyfriends in forensics. In any case, Your Honor, I can't accept this as evidence. What? You must know the two rules of evidence law. Rule number one, no evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department. In other words, this shoe is illegal evidence, at least for the time being. Uh, is that right, Mr. Wright? It seems so. Edgeworth sure is celebrating. Not so fast, Mr. Edgeworth. Don't forget, I used to be a detective. As I mentioned previously, this shoe has already been tested by a member of the forensics department. As you can see, it was approved by the police department as of today. Even the general public can produce official evidence, Mr. Edgeworth. N uh, is that right, Mr. Wright? It seems so. Edgeworth is looking pretty solid. You can at least study some evidence for, really. The prosecution's complaints notwithstanding, it appears that this evidence satisfies the first rule of evidence law. However, it seems you have yet another count against you, witness. Anything to ensure the guilty are properly judged. Very well, Mr. Wright. You may cross-examine the witness. Oh my god, this woman... Before the trial for defence consideration... I should never mention those five minutes when I wasn't looking at the crime scene. Why did you lie about those five minutes? I guess you could say I just wanted people to look at the results. The results? How many times do I have to say this? I saw the chief prosecutor stab the victim before my very eyes. Compared to that, a five minute blank means nothing. Then why didn't you just tell the truth? Don't make me laugh. We're dealing with the most untrustworthy of the vile lot known as prosecutors. Falsified evidence, arranged testimonies, raising and manipulating evidence. When you fight monsters, you need to use every trick in the book. This when the suspect is admitting she did it. The false testimony is the most despicable crime for Miss Star. Let's just get this over with. Now to the matter of the victim's shoe. And you found the shoe at the scene of the crime. I detained the chief prosecutor and notified the police department. I wanted to make myself useful while I was waiting for the police to arrive. So, like an ill-trained pooch, she snuck off of the shoe. I was afraid someone would erase the chief prosecutor's crime. This shoe is my secret weapon if that should happen. See this fashionable basket I have here? It carries more than lunchboxes, gentlemen. I'm happy for you and your lunchbox bag, really. In any case, you remove valuable evidence from the scene of the crime. Now tell us what you did next. Two types of blood were found in the shoe. Alright. So you brought it to the forensics department. If you're going to submit something as evidence in court, you need it approved. To do that, evidence must be analysed by a forensics expert, and she got away with her little coop because she used to be a detective. The shoe does appear to have blood stains on it. Well, the man was stabbed after all. And that blood belonged to the victim, Detective Goodman. As I said, there are two types of blood found on the shoes. And the other blood type matches that of the defendant, Miss Lana Sky. You can't say for sure that blood belonged to the defendant with a blood test. You came to know something about blood tests, rookie, huh? Or well, speak up. Uh, well, blood comes in four types, A, B, O, and A, B. However, you can't tell from a blood test whether a murder was committed in cold blood. That's just a figure of speech, Mr. Wright. Actually, we can, tell we can differentiate between millions of types of all the blood tests out there, which means that we can more or less narrow any sample of blood down to just one person, or so I hear. Now, that's pretty specific. If I had a little more time, I would have gotten DNA test results. But they said there's, there's very little doubt it could be anyone but Miss Lana Skies. Hmm. So the suspect's blood was found in the victim's shoe. The ties are directed to the death of Detective Goodman. I was afraid he was going to say that. 
Wait. Can't let this evidence go through without a fight. You ordered the peppered fish bucks, right? Some like it hot, Mr. Wright. Some like your client. Some like your client. She's in enough hot water to make a whole fat of soup. Mr. Wright, do you or don't you have a problem with the shoe? A problem? This is critical. Is there a problem with the shoe? Sure. If I'm not imagining things, I say there's one critical problem with this evidence. A clear contradiction. That gleam in your eyes. She's still young, rookie. I give you a peppered fish fat now, but you couldn't take the heat, could you? She was wearing gloves, according to her, though. Right? Let's hear what Mr. Wright has to say. What is the contradictory about the victim's shoe? Show us the problem with this evidence. Right. The problem with this evidence is here. Where? Uh, take that finger and point at your own head. Is there the blood stain at the bottom then? It didn't exactly tell us which blood stain was whose, did it? It to be somewhere on the shoe, right? Wait, no, wrong button. Does that mean back of the shoe? I wonder if you notice there's blood on the bottom of this shoe. Don't mess with me, Rocky. Or it'll be your blood on the bottom of my shoe. Hmm. Indeed, there's quite a bit of blood on the bottom of the shoe. It makes sense. The victim was stabbed with a knife. What could possibly be contradictory about the blood on the bottom of this shoe? Ah. The problem lies in the footprint. The footprint? Note that the bottom of the victim's shoe is covered in blood. Then, isn't it strange? Why weren't any bloody footprints found by the scene of the crime? Aha! As you can see, there are no traces of such footprints at the scene of the crime. That contradicts your claim about the shoe. This picture only shows part of the force, so there could have been bloody footprints. Then where are they, Mr. Edgeworth? Because we checked the scene and found nothing of the sort. I love when they shout at each other. Order, order, order. Well, witness? What? Huh? I, uh... Great going, Mr. Wright, but... It's true that the lack of a footprint is a contradiction. But then we have to ask why there wasn't a footprint. Oh, that's true. There has to be a reason why there wasn't a footprint. Thing, Mr. Wright, thing. Hey, I don't know why it's not there. I'm just good at finding contradictions. What? I see. Now I get it. Get what? Our witness is more devious than I gave her credit for. We were hoodwinked to the very end. But she slipped. There is one vital hint to the truth in her testimony. What are you talking about? Think back to when she told us about apprehending the suspect. The chief prosecutor tried to resist, but her efforts were in vain. She knocked my hands aside, kicked over an oil drum. Oh, she's beautiful, but deadly. A predator, this one. A leopard woman. Alright. I thought that was a strange thing for the normally cool-headed chief to do. No kidding. Now witness, allow me to ask a very simple question. This oil drum, was it empty? Oh, that? Hmm. I'm not sure. I like I'm not sure I like your attitude, Mr. Edgeworth. Though apparently you're not the slowest conveyor belt in the lunchbox factory. Witness, well well, was the oil drum empty? The oil drum kicked over by the chief prosecutor was brimming with water. Well water? What does that mean? Still don't get it, Mr. Wright. Do you want to know the reason she knocked it over? The real reason? Aha, you don't mean. Yes, the suspect knocked over that oil drum for one reason and one reason alone. To erase the bloodstains that would have become would become evidence against her. I mean, we've got a point. 
That ties things up quite nicely. The bloodstains left on the victim's shoes tie her quite clearly to this murder. And after the deed was done, she knocked off the old drum to erase the telltale signs. Well, that's the prosecutor's speciality, erasing evidence. That reminds me, Miss Guy's right hand was her. Didn't she say she cut herself when she stabbed him? So that's when my sister's blood got on the shoe. Well, I see no reason to prolong this trial. But Mr. Wright, do something, please. What? What can I do? Your sister's confessed to the crime, and she tried to conceal it, but, but... Enough. There's no need to further debate the verdict, Your Honor. Very well. But Angel Star is on the prosecution side. She could have been lying about the water. This court finds the defendant, Miss Lana Sky. Little girl, what did you just say? Huh? Mummy? Did you say that I, Angel Star, was on the prosecutor's, prosecutor's side? Well, well, yeah, you are. You're saying my sister hid evidence by erasing the bloody footprints. Well, I thought you'd had your fill, but here you are demanding a second helping. Another lunchbox. A lunchbox called Evidence. Well, wait, witness, don't tell me you have something else. The time for deliberations has passed. Any further comments and you will be held in contempt of court. Your threats don't scare the cough up queen. Look at this. A photograph. I had it just in case anyone had the gall to suggest that the white shoe didn't belong to the victim. Hmm. I see no room for error in this evidence. But Mr. Wright, wait. Look at the asphalt in this there photo. Hey, it's clearly wet. Raising the last trace of doubt from the court's mind, immediately after the murder, the crime scene was washed with water. I I'm sorry, Mr. Wright. I guess I, I couldn't help after all. It's not your fault. I knew I couldn't win this case from the beginning. And it seems this is what your sister wanted anyway. I'm sorry, Mia. Right, wet or not, don't be so quick to throw in the towel. Get yourself up off the asphalt. Take another good look. Don't give up, not until the bitter end. This is the last piece of evidence. Very well. This time I'd like to declare a verdict for good. Objection! Oh my god, now I'm objecting. Your Honor, wait. What is it with you people? Can I hand down my verdicts in peace anymore? Whatever it is, can it wait? Then no, it can't. Then it will be too late. Look at this photograph, the last one submitted. This trial isn't over until we give each piece of evidence proper consideration. So right, are you saying there's a problem with this latest set piece of evidence? Yeah, I'll think later. Yeah, there's a problem, right or wrong, I've got to go ahead with this. I suppose since we've come this far, we should give every claim a fair shake. Very well, Mr. Wright. Show the, the problem in this photo. Do I see something? I'll do the one minute stretch in two seconds for it. I feel like I'm close to the end of this bit. I'll do it when we get to the end. Several. This. The problem is this, photograph. The problem in this photograph is here. What's this? There's something poking out of the car's muffler. Wait just a moment, Mr. Edgeworth. Your Honor? You just said muffler. However, I see no trace of a muffler or scarf of any kind in this photograph. A muffler is also part of a car or motorcycle, Your Honor. Just think of it as a part of the exhaust system, a pipe. I see, and I see. What's that suspicious looking cloth sticking out of the car's muffler? Hmm, so what if there's something sticking out of the muffler? What does it have to do with this case? Nothing, absolutely nothing. Sorry, Miss Star, but it's not going to be that easy. In fact, you've already told us why this is important to the case. You said as much in your testimony. Well, what? Let's see what Mr. Wright has on his mind. Tell us why you think this piece of coffee in the muffler is related to this case. Because she heard us say it on the phone, right? It'll be the phone. There, the word muffler. 
Miss Starr, record your testimony for the court. Ah, yes. When I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. That's what had me confused in my earlier testimony. Muffler? Ah, uh, yeah. Could it be that muffler you heard mentioned was actually this exhaust pipe? If so, so, that means this piece of a cloth is vital evidence. Oh. Whoa. I like how they look like I've just fucking smacked them. Exhausting. Oh my god, Warden. Well, it seems we will, ha we will have to suspend the proceedings. So suspend? I find myself wondering about that piece of cloth. If we leave any question unanswered here, we do a disservice to the law. Have the car at the crime scene inspected at once and bring me that cloth. The verdict will wait until after we've seen you all the evidence. Agreed? I suppose so. Phew, that was close. But we made it, at least for now. This court will, adjour will adjourn for a 30 minute recess. It's lunchtime after all. He's still hungry? Of course he is. To be continued. See, I need to go for a pee as well before I do my stretches. How did you get to the point where um, Date was stabbed, Dogma? It was sad. Let me just... Let me put some music on for you guys when I go to the toilet quickly. They shot him. Oh yeah, he got shot, not stabbed, right? Hey, Leo! Don't you have a football match to be watching? I literally just had a drink. That's alright, I've got another drink right here. Yeah, I'll do my stretch after I've gone to the toilet because I really need to pee. Did you get home alright, buddy? You're waiting for pizza? Nice. You're having a proper little fucking party over there. Right, I need to go pee though. I'll be back. Right, I'm back. I, I am back. I'm in the middle of making something for you, by the way, Jin. Something you will not enjoy at all. I need to do that as soon as I finish stream, though. Oh no. You'll love it. You will absolutely love it. Alright, let me do my stretches. Wait a minute, no, I've got to go in here. Chair yoga. When have I ever 
ever sent you anything you don't love, Lil? When have I ever done that to you? Uh, I probably needed to stretch. <laughs> I've been grumbling over my keyboard for some reason. Yeah, it's it's doing my shoulder blades the world of good. Thank you, Warden. Stretch out the arms. Right. Right. Let's turn the music off. And get on with it. Also, I'm sure my neighbours hated me earlier on because I was blasting out Christmas music. <laughs> Very loudly. <laughs> Even as a deaf person, I realised it was a little bit loud. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Um, Mr. Wright, how uh, what? A trial's always like this with you. Like you're swimming up in the bottom of a lake, about to reach the surface. But no matter how hard you paddle, you never seem to get there, pretty much. Except today we're swimming in quicksand. So what happened to your sister anyway? Apparently she got called up to the judges' chambers. Hmm? Probably something to do with that piece of cloth. So, this is where we turn the trial around, right? Our only weapon, a tiny and significant piece of cloth. I'm the one who, I'm the one who's starting to feel tiny and significant to tell the truth. Hola, partner. Here he comes! Aaron Black! They say you show a red cloth to a bull, it'll fire up its temper. That's what they told me when I was a young'un, at least. Officer Marshall, do I come to take a look? Come take a look, see at how the trial's going. Looks like I'm late. You've got the home ranch locked down tighter than a fort in an enemy territory. That hard, that hard to slip out, huh? What's going on over there anyway? All the police I've seen these last two days have been really on edge. You only got enough on your plate without worrying about other people compared to Speaking of tiny and significant, I want to see all you boys shaving your beards like this in future, right? This is how you need to be shaving your beards. You could be worrying about the chief prosecutor's taste in mufflers, for example. Um, Officer Marshall, the whole muffler thing didn't have anything to do with scarves. She wasn't even wearing a scarf. How did he get the knife in a quarter? How, that, that's true. But you don't shave your beard? Do you not trim it a little bit? You don't say. Now don't that just be all. I've seen the red breeze blow out her slender neck many a time. I saw it that day too. She was wearing a red muffler. What? At the award ceremony that afternoon, Edgeworth seen it too, I reckon. What does that mean? In the photograph taken at the crime scene, she wasn't wearing a scarf. It's in the muffler. Objection! How do you get- They left the kid in with a fucking sword! In one of them, a kid had a sword. Well, it might have been a fake sword, but he still had a sword. So, Miss Dar was mistaken. Well, it's about time. Remember, partner, sometimes you gotta grab the ball by the horns, and sometimes you just gotta let the ball go where it will. Time will tell. Uh, I have a bad feeling about this. So what are we swimming in now, Mr. Wright? If it's steak sauce, I can hook you up with some fine ribs. Yui! Trim it with scissors, that's hardly shaving. Well, trim it with a knife now, Candle, alright? Alright? I want to see you all trimming, shaving, just just rubbing a knife against your beard. Don't actually do that, because, you know, you could lose an eye. Nope. What do you mean, nope? Of all the people in here that would do something stupid like that, it would be you.
I'd like to resume. Keanu Reeves shaves with a katana. You have concern about what? What do you have concern about? You have a lot of concerns. More the carotid artery you're worried of losing? That's fair, that's fair. What's up? The judge keeps looking over the prosecution. It's something wrong, Mr. Hedgeworth. Your face is blue, your lips are purple, you're sweating bullets. The furrowed brow was grinding teeth, those watery eyes. What's more, your eyes unfocused. You doubled over, your back is bent. It can't be. This can't happen. I want to know what you're concerned about. Well, I wonder what happened to Mr. Edgeworth. Well then, I believe it is time we continued on with this trial. During our... That this is unacceptable. Hmm. It seems our prosecutor is quite beside himself. Ah, uh, excuse me. Knock knock. Check photos. I thought they were going to start doing the, um, the Gruffalo, you know? Oh my god, is that how big its foot is? Fuck, that mech is going to be a chunky ass boy. Oh my god, he's going to look so awesome though. You're going to have nowhere to put him. Actually, you don't like putting your Max on the thing behind you, though, do you, in your bed? I was going to say, he'd look quite cool going next to your mum's lighthouse. But I vaguely remember you saying you don't like putting them on there. That's so cool, though. He's going to be giant. I wasn't... I don't... That's the one I didn't like much because it was too boxy, right? But if it's big and boxy... That's going to be one sexy-ass fucking mech. Which is a point. For anyone, you're all following him. But for anyone who's not... Everyone should follow our boy. Because he is the best boy. He is the best boy of all of you. That foot is like the same size... <laughs> of your other one's leg. That's so cool, though. Can you unfollow just to follow again? Make sure you just definitely follow him because, you know, you miss out on great content like mech building. He plays lots of different variety games, especially retro games recently. You get a pick on him. You get to see Perp calling him a dingus and him thinking dingus is a terrible word. He's well worth the follow if you're not following him already. Forget about my eight followers to 500. Everyone in the world should follow Leo because he's just fantastic. Ding Chan. Ding Chan. Uh, uh excuse me. Knock, knock. Who's there? Ooh. Who is this guy? What's with this guy? A strange stuffy aura seems to be filling the courtroom. Oh, he's going to be a Jesus boy. Look at his tie. But also, he looks like- he looks like he's straight out of Pokemon. He looks like he's a fucking gym leader. Where's our Christian church-led gym leader, hey? Hey, the temperature rose 5.7 degrees when that man came in. Who on earth is he? Ah, it's you. Alright! He's blinking into my soul, guys. Oh, oh, hehe. <laughs> Sorry I'm late, Aji. The robes are packed, it's just me. Long time no see, Aji. How you been? Swim much these days? Ah, hello, hello. No, I've been so busy. Busy, busy smizzy, Aji, my boy. You have to make time to relax. Yes, indeed. Aji? Seems to be his nickname for the judge. I'm afraid you're right. Very afraid. Um, sorry, but who are you? Aha, <laughs> Giro Raito, the attorney. I've heard good things about you, son. 
Uh, <laughs> thanks. So sorry about our little worth. Our little worthy giving you all the trouble, eh? You know, we should all go swimming together sometime, jolly. L little worthy? Mr. Ryan, you don't know the district chief of police. He's the chief of police? Alright, I take it back. He's not a religious person. He's now one of my favourite people. I love this man. Can I have three of him? Ch chief of police? He's a top-ranking police officer in the entire district. Oh my god, I love that! I love that so much! I knew it was coming as well when it started the music sting that he was gonna just jump into it and he was gonna go like this. I love him! Name's Gant, Damon Gant. Pleased to meet you, everyone. He's gonna be the murderer, isn't he? He's gonna be the fucking murderer and I'm gonna cry. So, uh, to what do we owe this honor today? It's been over two years since you last come to this courtroom, hasn't it? Well, it's Bradley here. Look at the poor fellow. I just thought I'd help out by bringing this. Hey, that that's my sister's muffler. So Miss Star wasn't just seeing things. When the crime occurred, Miss Guy really was bearing that muffler. But to think that it was stuffed into the exhaust pipe. A little worthy's car, no less. It's really quite embarrassing, even for us. Well, what's this? It's what you call a switchblade knife. Quite perplexed than this. Chief, what kind of outfit are you running? But Mr. Edgeworth, how could they miss such a vital piece of evidence? If your investigators are this lax, how do you expect us to do our job? Now, now, wait a moment, Worthy. I've noticed I... I'm telling you to wait. Oh, he can be proper daddy when he wants to be, guys. Or didn't you hear me? Have a look at this document where it says person in charge of investigation. There's no mistaking that signature is there. Miles Edgeworth. That that's not fair. On the day of the crime, I, I had your head in the clouds because you got that award. I know how you feel. But you're the person in charge. I'll expect a written apology. What? Are you serious? Don't be too upset. We'll find a way to clean up this mess that you made. This is the first time I've seen Mr. Edgeworth at a loss for words. This kind of major blunder is something like you, Mr. Edgeworth. Ah, The court accepts this new evidence, but I'd like to ask the defense a favor first. Y yes Just to be sure, I'd like to take a look at the blade of this knife. The b blade, Your Honor? Well, I don't see why not. Could you open it up for me, I wonder? Yes, well, I think all you have to do is push that switch and... If I cut my finger, Mr. Wright, I wouldn't be able to pound my gavel anymore. If I hurt myself on this switchblade, like a fucking idiot, I wouldn't be able to pick up my little gavel and pound it on the bench. This man. This man. He's not been the same since he was firmed up in the first case, you know? Yeah, but if I cut my finger, I wouldn't be able to point... <laughs> Have I ever told the story? Have I ever told the story of when my niece burnt her finger? So when Christy was like a little, little baby... Well, not a little baby. She was like two, maybe. No, maybe a little younger than two. She might have been like one or something. She used to point her finger at any everyone. So we called it her pointing finger. Because, you know, it's just it's it's just an easy thing to do. Because she'd point at everyone with this one finger. She'd just point everywhere. Everything was pointed at with this finger. So we bought a Chinese takeaway. And she liked the dish sauce. And we weren't really paying attention to how hot the sauce was. So she just, like, because she just dipped her finger in things all the time. Because it was a pointy finger, you know? She used to have finger for everything. She dipped it in this fucking hot sauce and burnt her finger. And we were so sad because, oh, it's your little pointy finger. You burnt it. And she was crying and waving her finger around. It was, it was hilarious. But sad at the same time. She was fine, obviously. Come on, just hurry up and open it. I don't like this. Let me take charge. There. Ah, don't scare me like that. 
I'm the one who's scared. Look at this knife blade. The tip is broken off. And this dark red stain. Blood. Switchblade knife added to the court record. This does not excuse the actions of the police department. I would like to hear an explanation from the chief of police himself. I'm terribly sorry, but could I ask you to testify for us about the split between the prosecutors and the police and this knife? Sure, sure thing. Not a problem. Not even a li not even a little one, really. Look at that smile. Wouldn't you trust that smile, no matter what? Look at him. He's like a granddad. Look at him. Look at his little Pokemon face. This knife is special, but I can't say how here, unless there's evidence to prove a connection between this knife and Goodman. That was a bad day for the department. We weren't in any ship to do, any in do an investigation. A detective was killed at the police department. See, what a mess. Time of the crime, 5.15. Scary coincidence, eh? It's not officially linked to this here, this here case, so I can't talk much about it. What? There, there was a murder at the police department, a detective. That's hush hush information, Archie. We haven't exactly announced it yet. But wait, a second? You said 5.15. That's the exact time that Detective Goodman was killed at the prosecutor's office. Majima got that ass beat. Order, order, order. Anyway, we at the department were all flustered. As you might have well assumed, we're in the middle of a top, to top, top secret investigation. Don't tell anyone, okay? I think we understood the police department situation. Well, Mr. Wright, two detectives killed at the same time in two different places. The chances of that are really slim, scientifically speaking, of course. I'd like to exercise my right to cross-examine the witness. Very well. However, keep your questions focused on the case at hand. When is the football match tonight, by the way? Croatia's is up against Argentina, right? I was seeing a lot about Messi online. Now, I managed to avoid most things about Messi most of the time. <laughs> so for him to be everywhere online, it must be Argentina. Keep your questions focused on the case at hand. He took a blade for me, what, Majima? Well, Dogma, you need to learn that you are Majima's bitch. The only person that's going to stab you is Majima? Do you need to employ replacements for those two losses quickly? I don't think they're going to be missed. This knife is special, but I can't say how here. Excuse me, special? Mm-hmm. Hard to come by this particular knife anywhere else. Um, might that special thing be this little tag? Wait! 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 You know what I'm like when it comes to numbers in detective games. I remember Leon backwards, alright? I remember this shit. The tag. Oh, sorry, right -o. But I can't say that now, not that. We established that the knife in Goodman's chest was this knife. Now, why was there another knife at the scene of crime? That's quite a mystery. And like a mystery, it's wrapped in something, a muff- something, a muffler. Why is my computer doing a- Huh. If there was any problems with my with my stream, it's because they were doing a virus check. my virus come or my virus protection comes up i just see avia they're like 
fuck? Question mark? And that's his evidence to prove a connection between this knife and Goodman. Right. Right. Guys? Guys, I'm gonna... You're gonna hate me. But I'm gonna lean on this. And if I'm not right, I will never play this game again. That's what you can do for now? I'm sorry to hear that, Dogma. I hope work goes a little better for you today, at least, you know? I hope it's not as shitty as yesterday. Well, boring, not shitty, really. Alright, we're gonna lean on this. Objection! Wait a second. Ah, at last, an honest-to-goodness objection. This knife. This has to have something to do with, detec with Detective Goodman. What do you mean? Aha, an honest-to-goodness, what do you mean, from Mudgy? This is great. Look at the tag on this knife, it reads SL92, and this is important, why? Over here we also have a memo, we also have a memo that was on the body of the victim. Hmm, what's this? 6 minus 7S, 12, divided by 2. No, you're on it, it's upside down, upside, the printed name on the memo makes it look like it's the right side up, but if you turn it around, it... but turn it around and what do you get? Oh, bitch, it was Leon. Ah, aha. Whoever wrote this note was holding the paper upside down. SL9. That's the same thing that is written on the knife's tag. Order, order, well, Chief? Ah, uh, well, I guess the cat's out of the bag. You win, right? Oh, I win. Aha. Uh -huh. What game is this guy playing? Leon! This knife was evidence in a case. It was stolen from the department's evidence room. That was a bad day for the department. We weren't in any shape to do any invest do an investigation. So this knife was stolen. Yes, but on the day of the murder. It was evidence, you say. Was it, in fact, a murder weapon? Nice, nice, nice. Good show, little worthy. It was a murder weapon, as it happens. It was evidence from a case long since solved. So this knife was stolen on the day of the murder, and it was found in the exhaust pipe of Edgeworth's car. Hard to think there isn't a connection there. That was a bad day for the department, we weren't in any shape to do an investigation. Something happened at the police department too, huh? You got a good look in your eyes there, right, oh my boy, sharp, hungry. So, something did happen, and why wasn't I informed? Why weren't you informed? Well, why didn't you ask? No matter, I understand. You were busy with that. What with Lana's case and all. He was informed, though. That's gonna be that guy, right? That guy came and gave him a case thing, and he ignored it, right? Well, what happened? What happened to the police department that day? A detective was killed at the police department. See, what a mess. On the same day that a detective was killed in pros the prosecutor's parking lot, another detective was killed at the police department. That's a fact. Surprising, isn't it, Udgy? I'm at a loss for words. And the perpetrator? Do you have a suspect? Well, there was a suspect. Just arrested him, in fact. Just arrested? That was quick. But there's still a lot of unanswered questions. Maybe you could help, right, Earl? I suppose I could help if you help by help me by giving me data on your case. Oh, good one. This kid's sharp. Okay, here's the deal. I'll tell you one thing and one thing only. Oh. How the victim was killed. Well, the victim... Well, we know when the victim died. 5.15. Did they already say... Did they say he was stabbed? I feel like I felt like they said he was stabbed, but they might not have. And we know where he was killed. Oh. What am I gonna go with? What am I gonna go with?
was killed. When he died. Well, we know when he died. Maybe that. So tell me, where was the victim found? Well, I can't speak on where the corpse was found, but I can say the crime took place in the evidence room at the police department. The evidence room. Wait a second. I have heard of that. The evidence room. Didn't he mention that in his testimony just now? This knife was evidence in a case. It was stolen from the department's evidence room. There's the connection between the two cases. You seem happy, Mr. Wright. Happy? Happy? We just got handed our ticket to go, go to town on this case. With the link between the two cases established, we finally have some leverage. Now we can get Gra Gant to testify about the details. It's not officially linked to this year case, so I can't talk about much about it. Hey, 1L! This would have never happened if it was Kiru. Cries and birch noises. Chief. The defense's position is simply this. The connection between these two cases has already been proven. Hey, you don't say. Well, out with it, right? Or what's your connection? He's out with it, Mr. Wright. The connection in the pl is a place mentioned in the testimony we just heard. The knife found in the lot was stolen from the police department's evidence room. Not to mention the victim had on him the case number of the knife's evidence tag. And we also know that the detective murdered in the police department was killed in that very same evidence room. Indeed, there do seem to be too many connections for it not to be co a coincidence. I love his eyes. He's gonna smile at us again. There we go! You two make a good pair. It took my men two days to find out what you deducted right here. Chief, I request that you release your information on the victim at the de police department. See, that's the tricky part. It hasn't been announced yet and all. Can we get the information? Unofficially. Hmm... You fiddle with that hair. Sure, why not? It's unofficial after all. What? Really? Who would have guessed? I'll cooperate, but I can't reveal the name of the victim at the department, okay? If you're going to tell us a little, why not tell us everything? Ah, well, case information is sticky stuff. You have to do everything properly. Oh well, I guess I might as well try to get what I can out with him. The ID number, maybe? Because we've been learning that the ID number is important, right? Okay, how about you tell me the victim's ID number? Hmm, sure. Why not? It's like you... It's not like you'll be able to tell who it is from that. Of course not. You won't tell me their name after all. We keep a tight lid on ID numbers, so don't go getting your hopes up. The number is 5842189. Well, that's quite long. And we have to remember these. Remember these. It drives me nuts. 82. I can't do it. You didn't even get the first number right. Well, Mr. Wright, does this tell you anything? The ID number of the victim at the police department. Wait! Five, eight, four, two. Actually, it does, Your Honor. It does, I think. Meaning? It has to be what I think it is. But what does this mean? Well, let's hear what, what the defense has to say. You say the ID number of the detective who was murdered at the police department tells you something. What does it tell you? Witness. What is it, Mr. Wright? You're grinning like a schoolgirl on prom night. No, I... It's just... I got confused. And this is news? Huh? Just come out with both guns blazing, like you always do. The police department, the prosecutor's office, two places, two detectives murdered at one time. Actually, I happen to have a police ID number here. A ho, is it yours? N no, Your Honor, I'm a defense attorney, remember? This is the ID number of our victim, Detective Goodman. Shame on you, Rito. Personal ID is a top secret. Detective Goodman's ID number is 5842189. And this means what exactly? Huh? Wait! 
That ID number we heard from the chief earlier. That started with 82. Hmm, I've forgotten. You didn't even get the first number right again. The number the chief of police gave us was 5842189. I remember the 89. Well, wait a second, right? What does this mean? Mean? That's what I want to know. The two ID numbers are identical. In other words, the detective killed in the police department evidence room was Bruce Goodman. What does our witness think about that? Oh, ho, ho. Sharp as attack, right? Oh, sharp as attack. But, but wait, Detective Goodman is our victim. He was killed at 5.15 in the underground parking lot. Yeah, the Detective Bruce Goodman was also killed at the police department in the evidence room at the exact same time. But that's impossible. So what we're saying is, the same person was killed at the same time and in completely different locations. Order, 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 Chief, what does this mean? No. What I want to know is, why didn't I hear about this? Yes, it's top secret, fine, but I'm the prosecutor in charge of the case. Now, just wait a second, Worthy. No need to get all flustered. Your Honor, the police department has made a grave error in this case. Wait. I said wait. Or didn't you hear me? The oversight, the grave error? Mr. Edgeworth, they're yours. But what? How? How dare? We informed you yesterday. I believe it was our officer Meekins who brought you the news. Uh, officer Meekins? Mr. Wright. Where have we heard that name before? Wait, aha. Uh -huh. We were there. Uh. Excuse me, but is Mr. Edgeworth uh, anywhere on the premises? I'm here, sir, at the request of the chief, sir. I've got your report, sir. You don't mean him. According to Meekins, you didn't accept the report. Hard to believe. But, but your officer, he told me. He said the report had nothing to do with the Lana Sky incident. Detective Bruce Goodman murdered in the police department evidence room. Mr. Edgeworth, the victim's name is written right on the top of the report. Well, why didn't your officer tell me? Honestly, I'm not sure if that officer was capable of making the connection. He did seem challenged. In any case, this is a serious error, a gross negligence of duty on your part, Worthy. But, but, sir, you could have submitted that report this morning to the court's evidence. Then I... He's like a disappointed granddad. Look at him. No such luck this time, Worthy. Or should I say, unworthy. Oh, What? Now, what was the second rule of evidence for, hmm? Well, Mr. Wright, huh? Oh, well, it's, uh, rule two. Unregistered evidence presented must be relevant to the case on trial. And how is this rule relevant? Normally, you submit a list of evidence to be used in court before the trial. This report wasn't on that list. So, what does this mean? I couldn't submit this evidence until a connection was proven in court. The connection was just proven by Wright over there. Good job, Wright, my boy. Huh? Uh, oh, I, I somehow keep skipping things by accident. I don't mean to do it, but I keep doing it. It seems we have come to the end of this trial. I know you're going through a tough time, Worthy. What with all those rumours? You were even in the defendant's chair just this past December. I apologise for this terrible lack of due diligence on my part. But Mr. Edgeworth, please... Just give me one more day, or one day, I'll get to the bottom of what happened, if it's the last thing I do. You better get results this time, really. You have my profound apologies, sir. Poor Mr. Edgeworth. I don't think there's ever been an error this serious in the history of this court. You don't think? I've seen some pretty big errors in this court. I regret one for every day that the prosecution has requested. Will that be sufficient, Mr. Edgeworth? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Whatever your punishment for whatever your punishment for this is, for your sake, I hope it's not decisive. Very well. Court is adjourned. Well, he's being punished. This this world is harsh on its bloody lawyers. February 23rd, 2.15pm, Wright & Co. Law Offices. 
Uh, um, Mr. Wright, so what's going on with the case anyway? I, I'm a little confused, huh? Well, well, um, let's see, what is going on? The victim, Detective Bruce Goodman, was stabbed to death at 5pm on the 21st. He died in the prosecutor's parking lot in the police department's evidence room. What's this anti-evidence room part? The prosecutor's office and the police department are 30 minutes apart by car. Well, that's what we're going to find out, or try to at least. Alright, let's do it. Glad she's in good spirits, but I'm not sure she's going to be much help with us, this. Don't be so sure, Mr. Wright, huh? Look, we're in this together, right? I'll prove that these thick rim glasses of mine aren't just for show. Let's go. Science awaits us. Prosecutor's office, underground parking lot. Technically, the emphasis wasn't to allow the defense to review because this universe doesn't like the defense much. True! You know, I really don't think we should worry about the police department murder. There wasn't even a body found there. Who cares? Yeah, it was only our victim who was killed in their evidence room. No biggie. Besides, my sister would never do such a thing. I know it. That oil drum. Was it empty? The oil drum kicked over by the chief prosecutor was brimming with water. My sister erasing evidence of the crime scene. Never. Even though she says they don't get along, Emma really likes her sister. That's not it at all. It's just... Is she actually a mind reader? We're both professionals at what we do, and I trust her. Big words for a high school student. Or well, whether there was blood on the floor or not. The water in the oil drum washed it all away. Hehehe. <laughs> Ignore the strength of my science at your own peril, Mr. Wright. Huh? What's that grin for? The situation calls for one thing, and that is luminal testing fluid. The luminal? Blood is sticky stuff, you know. You can't just wash it away with a little water. Even if you can't see it, it's still there. But when the police have already done those tests... Never trust anyone's eyes but your own, Mr. Wright. Just give it a try. But me? Why do I have to do it? I'm a miner. I can't even drink yet. We're testing bloodstains with this stuff, not drinking it. Here, look. I'll lend you these glasses. Huh? You have an extra pair of those things. Test for a blood reaction. Just spray the lumen on it. Like this, see? Psh. Press on it to spray on it. Okay, let's find us some blood stains. Right, let's go. Got some. I can see her eyes shining behind those glasses. So this is a blood stain. Uh, it's so. Uh, Emma, you're shaking. It's just this is my first time seeing real blood. Scientific investigation in ac action. Okay, well, we definitely know that this is a blood stain, but doesn't something strike you as odd? Scientifically speaking, of course. What's odd about this scientifically? The location? The amount? The perpetrator and detective Goodman fought here, right? Don't you think there'd be a little more blood? I definitely think so. I mean... Look at all the blood in the sole of the victim's shoe. It is pretty strange. If they fought here, there'd have to be more, ha, had to have been more blood in this. Uh, hey, Mr. Wright, I'm gonna mark up the four plants when we find a blood stain, okay? See, I'm pretty handy to have around, right? Oh uh, yeah, and this stuff's pretty handy too. I saved up my allowance to buy that. The real testing crew received from one very proud looking Emma Sky. We can't be sure that the police will reveal all their evidence in court. Sometimes they fail to mention evidence that doesn't fit with their view of the case. And let's drag that hidden evidence out into the light of day. Yeah, it feels like we're really investigating a crime now, doesn't it? Guess I should give this spray on a, give this a spray on anything suspicious. Ha! I wonder how that food of yours would react to a nice deli box. Miss Star. You only trust your own eyes, not bad you two. This day old deli box is on the house. Sorry, it's just that kind of lead. Sorry, it's just that kind of lead and doesn't really get my mouth watering. I don't want to talk to you. Fuck off. Can I? Wait, I want to use more. Let me, let me spray things. Let me spray things. I want to spray. You suddenly put me in a tight spot today. My apologies, Miss Star, but no, no, it's okay. It's, it was my fault. Oh, we know. I witnessed everything from the security room right there. 
But I was afraid that wouldn't sound convincing enough, you see? I was wrong to think that. I'm sorry. Sorry? You lied in the witness stand. That's unforgivable. Little girl, don't forget what's important here. Even if the place I witnessed the events from was different, I still saw what I saw. I saw Chief Prosecutor Sky stab a man in cold blood, and that testimony still stands. Ah. I swear it on my honour as a detective. She stabbed Goodman. I know this photograph has something important to tell us, but what? So, you were a detective, weren't you, Miss Starr? Yes, it was a long time ago, well, two years ago. No matter how hardened the criminal, when they, when they faced me, they coughed it up. Coughed it up? They confessed. They babbled like babies. You know. I may seem like a demon sometimes, but I can be an angel too. I wouldn't doubt it. Every day I dragged the dirt out of the mouth of suspect after suspect, and before long they called me the cop up call. Me. Yeah? Oh, and here I thought someone had gotten food poison from your lunches. And you were let go, uh, fired. I felt I had found my dream job when I become an investigator, and if these prim and proper prosecutors hadn't let me go, I'd still be one today. It's all because of that case, the SL9 incident. Oh god, now we've got the fucking SL9 incident. SL9? Wait, she doesn't mean. Wait, I can't present that to her, so do I have to back out? Um, what do you think about this? The SL9 incident is written on that knife, and on that note, Goodman. Goodman was the head detective on that case, you know. Really? That knife was evidence from that case, the murder weapon. It was due for transfer on the very day that Goodman was killed. As I suspected, SL9 isn't over, not yet. Do you think you could tell us more about the SL9 incident? She's not going to tell us fucking jack shit. Sorry, I had to plug my phone in. It was doing a die. Uh. Do I have anything else? That's on that incident. It's written on that knife and on the note. Well, I know this. I know all this. Oh, fucking... She won't tell me more. Why won't she tell me more? Tell me more! Take a look at this. You, you, yes? You said you wanted some hot tea, right? Uh, no, but thanks. She didn't even look at it. Hmm, you must have to brew the leaves. Long time to get rich flavor like this. We pre-infuse the leaves to steam before brew brewing. I knew it, so that's the secret to the aroma, exquisite. The only th thing I'm smelling here is wasted time. She won't tell me anymore, guys. She won't tell me anymore! It was when I grabbed the chief prosecutor on the shoulder. She dropped that phone on the pavement. That's when you heard her talking about the muffler, right? Little did I know it was a trap. The red car's muffler and the prosecutor's red muffler. What was this guy really trying to say, I wonder? Can you take a look at this? No. No. No, wait. It's about as red as a port sports car can get. Yep, it's pretty red, alright. The body was found in Edward's car trunk. The lock on the trunk was broken too. So the question is, why did Miss Guy choose his car? So what model of car is it? I think it was called a sedan or a coupe or something like that. Those are car types, Mr. Wright, not models. You're a guy, aren't you? Mr. Wright, you're supposed to know these things. Maybe it's about time I got my driver's license. B block is through there. That's where visitors park. So, Miss Dark climbed over this bench. It seems so, yeah. That fence is nine feet high at least. With no time like the present, I think I'll give it a little try. Eek! 
It's okay, don't cry. Maybe this is a lunch, Lunchland Olympics team. What? She's wearing boots though, isn't she? With heels on them. A block. This area is reserved for prosecutors. Defense attorneys are re relegated to B block. I dream of it that went. She's already said all this. Oh, that's not where I wanted. This rope, is it? Yep. They laid it in the outline of the victim's body. So wait. The victim must have died when they could have... Like, no, she said this the last time as well. So this is the famous wall from. Well, no time like the present. I'll try to kick it over myself. Yeah. The, that's okay. Don't cry. That loudest guy must be one strong woman. I don't think that proves that she did it. Wait. Oh no, the brain wasn't what clicked. So this is the famous divider. It sure helped us knock a hole in that testimony today. Come to think of it, this divider helped our case more than the actual witness. The great divider, chip off the old parking block. It's just a wall, scientifically speaking. Here's the phone, let's see if it works. Hey, don't touch stuff you don't need to be touching. Alright, she's still being an idiot. Look, door, this must mean something. No. No! Oh, she's gonna say the same about that. Right, let's move. Let's move somewhere else. Looks like Miss Guy is in questioning. I hope the detectives aren't yelling at her. How did you kill him in two places at the same time? Can you imagine? How is she supposed to answer that? Wait a second. Did Mr. Gantz say they'd arrested a suspect in a police department murder? Let's come back later. All right. It's me, Austin. It's been me all along. Police station, criminal affairs department. Well, everyone looks deadly serious here. Well, there was a vicious murder of a detective down at the police department. Yes, but the same detective was also killed at the same time in the prosecutor's law. Ugh, it makes my head hurt. Well, first things first, let's go check out the police department's crime scene. Yes, you sound dead set on investigating, but don't mess up or we could wind up dead. I doubt anyone wants more mysteries, dead bodies around here right now, but it does, doesn't look like anyone's going to help us much either. What is he up to? That must be the chief of detectives. He's glued to his computer screen. What? Detective killed in the evidence room? Tell no one outside the police department? No. I told that old lady at the, re at the restaurant everything. Someone's getting a demotion. Police department entrance. It's even busier here today than it was yesterday. The detectives are running around so fast they're blurring. I suppose it makes sense. A detective did get killed here after all. So the evidence room, the scene of the crime, according to the pamphlet we got at the front desk. Here it is. She's like a kid at an amusement park. Oh, a real crime scene. Let's go take a look. There we go. New place. I almost forgot what you were talking about. Yeah, Dogma was really sweet and gifted two guest subs after um they would gifted one themselves. Very cute. What's with the deco in this place? It's very eccentric. According to the pamphlet, this is a guard station to the evidence room. So beyond that door is the evidence room, the scene of the crime. I'm sure it's that way. Oh, oh. What's wrong? It's those cacti. They're so prickly, so imposing. It's hard to think straight. If you can't handle the cacti, stay out of the desert. What I want to know is, if this is a guard station, where is the guard? I have a feeling I know who he is already. It it's... Look at look at it. Who is it gonna be? It's fucking Marshall. Like literally, fucking look, look, look at what's happening around you, Phoenix. Look. Yipes! These sure are prickly. They must be the real deal. I would think just just one big one would be sufficient. These cacti are a lot like my sister, actually. How so? 
Encased in a cold, rigid shell, with spines pointing in every direction, just like her. I'm not so sure I see the resemblance. It's more an attitude thing than a physical similarity. She was sharing, like, something deep there, buddy. This swinging door makes the place look like some kind of saloon. But look, it's nailed shut. You can't get in that way. Of course not. If you went in through there, here, the cactus would fall over. Ouch. I'd say it'd be more of a year myself. There's a security guard uniform hanging here. It looks more like a costume than a uniform, honestly. A leather jacket, leather pants, a leather... What was that called again? A punchy? A paunchy? A pinchy? I know, a poochy. Hmm. Wait, maybe that wasn't it. It's a poncho, but I think I'll keep that information to myself for the time being. Look at all this alcohol. It looks like there's a visual feed from the evidence room here. There's a light blinking below the monitor. It says recording. I bet we could use this computer to check on who went in and out of there. Alright, well, let's jump over the guardrail and do it. There's a lasso on the floor. Look, on the floor, a lasso. Hmm, looks like it's set up to trap something. A trap here? Wait, I know. Maybe someone was trying to catch a wild bull in here, but the lasso missed. You sure have an active imagination. The evidence room is beyond that door. Let's just walk in. It won't open. You thought it'd be open. I think we need someone's permission to go in there first. Is that it? Is that it? No. Well, this place is as classy today as it was yesterday, and I'm sure it'll still be just as classy tomorrow, Emma. Incidentally, Edgeworth's not here. I'm sure he's up doing important investigations. I hope that's what he's doing. I guess we'll have to come back. Well, where have I got to go then? Look, the patrolman is suing the other detective. You idiot, what were you thinking? Where's your head? So, sir, it's r right here, sir. I guess he was just, it wasn't soon. He was just showing the detective where his head was. They make a good pair. Blue Badger is still writhing around today. Are we going to get to see it again? Come on, this is hell of adorable. This is the cutest thing. Do I want to know something that has absolutely no bearing on the story here? Yes. Tell me. I haven't had to get a parking spot this far back ever. I can see the... Oh my god. Can we, uh, can we return to happier times when Edgeworth was a suspect? Yes, alright. We can do that. Hey, Garth. How's it going? I did kind of see you stream again. How have your streams been going? You've been streaming a bit late for me. So I haven't been able to pop in yet. But how have streams been going? Doo -doo -doo. I just like the song, guys. Guard station, try using luminal there. I hope his department has been dancing like crazy. Can I take out his batteries? I just can't help but feel he's going to do something naughty. What am I doing? Wrong buttons. Move.
This was the guard station, right? Whee! Got enough followers with affiliate? Fuck yeah, mate! Oh! Wow, we got a reaction. Hmm. There's clearly by the run spines here. This room's pretty messy. Someone must have tripped over something and planted their head right in the spines. I think that might be more painful than being murdered. That poor cactus. I think someone might have tried to shove that cactus up their ass. I'll definitely come and hang out in your chat if I can get a chance. Cactusy, look, look. Our main annoying little brat is busy today, all right? We don't need any of that shit. We don't need that shit going on. All right, I'm missing something. And I feel what I'm missing. Because the only person I can talk to is this woman. And she must tell me at some point. It's not, it's my Chinese badge. I think a Petroid piece of provolone would fetch more on the open market. My badge is up for sale, not yet at least. I had one of those up until two years ago. Back when you were cough up queen, right? We found this ID card here in this parking lot. Well, there's no mistaking that. It's definitely Goodman's. But it's the same ID as the man who was killed at the police department. That's impossible. I wish I could be so sure. Can you take a look at this? Uh, she's gonna go on about tea. A, blood, a body with Edgeworth's knife stuck in it was found in Edgeworth's car. I think he owes me his gratitude. Gratitude? Why, if I hadn't witnessed the crime, Mr. Edgeworth had been the suspect. Hmm, I wonder. Still strange. Why didn't our chief prosecutor have her own murder weapon ready? Can you take a look at this? Uh, everything's a dodo if you're brave enough? Exactly, Candle, exactly. I clicked on that. I wish her, like, I'm not gonna answer your question thing was a little less annoying. A long time ago, or two years ago, no matter how hard in the criminal, when they faced me, they coughed it up. Yeah, drag the dirt out of their mouths. Yeah, I know this. I know all this. Can I? Wait, can I just use this now? No. You can't just randomly like be like, OBJECTION! Yeah. I'm sure I've shown her everything at this point. Think about it, I could have taken a picture from the guard room. 
But even I get flustered sometimes. So you went straight to the scene of a crime. I rushed forward the chain link fence in an effort to stop the murder. That's when I took this film, yes. In other words, five minutes after the crime. Those five minutes are the whole problem. The whole of my testimony, as it were. Five minutes weren't the problem, Miss Star. You lying was the problem. Listen, little girl. I've had my testimony discarded before, and I wasn't going to have it dis disregarded again. Just like that time. That time? Wait. Oh, for fuck's sake, it was that picture all along. Fuck that picture. That incident really opened up my eyes to the truth. We're nothing to them. Disposable. Disposable to who? Two years ago, it was the biggest case I've ever handled. Oh, look, it's Marshall! The police and the prosecutors were desperate for decisive evidence, so they didn't solve it. On the contrary, it was solved quite cleanly. The criminal was caught and executed. Uh, executed? Yes, the criminal got what was coming to him. It doesn't get any cleaner than that. The only problem was, they never did find decisive evidence, not a shred. What? But the criminal was executed, right? On the basis of evidence of a sort, made up evidence. What? what? You mean they executed someone with fabricated evidence? Right. Right. Does anyone found guilty of anything in this just get sentenced to death for something? The best part came several months after the trial. Every detective involved with the case was dealt with. Some were demoted to patrolmen. Others found themselves out of the job. And you were one of those. Myself and one other person you know well. Wait, could it be? Exactly, Detective Jake Marshall. Oops, I mean Police Department Security Detail Officer Jake Marshall. Christ, tears of remorse as I burn the cactus to put it out of its misery. Oh my god. As professional detectives, we investigated that case from every angle. Jake was particularly determined, and then it was over, and he was demoted. However, he hasn't forgotten, and neither have I. You haven't forgotten SL9. There was another side to that case, a hidden side. That's what we're after now, and no one up in their fancy offices can stop us. Wait, the, those lunches you sell? There's only one reason I come to sell lunches in this accursed office. I come here to meet old friends, boyfriends that can help me investigate. Miss Star's old boyfriends, how many does she have anyway? Just when all the detectives on SL9 have disappeared, we find new evidence. There has to be a connection. So, rookie, what, what? It seems like you're serious about investigating this case. Yes. Then you should take this. A Salisbury steak lunch. I know a certain guy who might help you if you tempt him with this treat. Um, Miss Star, Officer Marshall, is he your, uh... Are you his? Are you g g going out? Why do you want to know? I was just wondering what happened to him. A long time ago, when he was helping my sister do cases, he was so nice. He got along so well with my sister, it made me jealous. And he was nice to me too back then. This would be when Officer Marshall was a detective. But now, now he's so cold. Jake and I are merely cooperating on this investigation. We're putting the past to rest, as it were. Nothing more than that. I, I see. Thank you. Officer Jake Marshall. Hmm. Right. Do I have to go? Because the stake sounds like it's going to be Marshall we're going for. This place is, char is charged with fa frantic energy as always. Please. Huh? Wasn't that... One steak lunch, please. Oh, it's you. Detective Gumshoe. Now's no time for chit-chat, pal. I'm busy. A busy man. What I really need is a steak lunch from Lunchland. Oh, you mean one of these? Actually, it's not for sale. I think I just heard the sound of his heart breaking. Now's no time for despair. We caught our criminal. Now we just need evidence. The criminal? You mean... You heard about the stabbing in the police department evidence room, right, pal? I did. On the same day that a detective was killed in the prosecutor's parking lot, another detective was killed at the police department. And the perpetrator? Do you have a suspect? Well, there was a suspect. Just arrested him, in fact. It's the biggest scandal to hit the station in ages. Everything's topsy-turvy. But Detective Gumshoe, who was it? Listen, pal, all I know is I need me a steak lunch pronto. Standing around here talking isn't gonna fill my belly. Well, wait, don't leave. If you want to know more, head on down to the detention centre, pal. Questioning should be over, so I figure he's down there having a good cry. Later. 
He ran off to the evidence room. Well, this investigation is off to a running start. Can I go after him? No. No. Alright. Right, who is it? Is Marshall now in trouble? Is it Marshall? It's gonna be Marshall, right? Still, I do feel better about things, a little. I mean, they caught the person who stabbed Detective Goodman, didn't they? Uh, yeah, I guess they did. Best to not go too far down that road right now. Things will just get confusing. When? Well, what was that? Sir, that's what I'm saying. Me, a perpetrator? I, I, I'd say I, I was the perpetrated against her. That's what I'd say. It's Meekins. Uh, oh, uh, hi. Greetings, sir. Wait, I know who you are. Excuse me, but it's Mr. Edgeworth uh, anywhere on the premises. I'm here, sir, at the request of the chief, sir. I've got your report, sir. Officer Meekins, so you're a guard here at the detention centre. No, sir, I'm not, sir. I'm a little lost patrolman, like a little lost lamb, sir. Oh, I get it. You're here to deliver a report. No, sir, I, uh, how should I say this? Wait, he isn't, is he? You, Officer Meekins. You didn't, did you? Uh, perpetrator Officer Meekins reporting, sir. What? What? Now this is an unexpected turn of events. Officer Meeseeks. Oh my god, I haven't even thought about Meeseeks. Officer Meekins, have a look at this. Go ahead, sir. Laugh. Laugh at me, sir. Ha ha ha. I know what you want to say. You're going to tell me how she was has one just like it. But me? Why would I? I know, sir. I know. I'm the only one without a girl. I'm... I'm the only one without a girl with the matching badges. Nowhere. I'm alone. All alone. Is that so wrong? Life isn't all about high school sweethearts and youthful romances, sir. Is he talking about those badges on her coat? Hmm. I like to think there's a difference between my badge and a fashion accessory. Sir, I'm a patrolman with general affairs, sir. Sir. Ow, I can hear you fine, Officer Meekins. I had some business that day, sir, and so I went to the evidence room, sir. The guard station in front of the room was empty, sir. So normally there's a guard at the evidence room. That's right, sir, because evidence is kept in the evidence room, sir. Now, the security officer was none other than Officer Marshall. The Marshall? Then, sir, I happened to glance at the security room monitor. That's when I saw him, sir. A suspicious person in the evidence room. A suspicious person, sir. A suspicious person. yo wah wah wah, -wah. What the heck is this guy doing? So what happened then? After that, sir, I... I... Everything went white, sir. I... Well, he didn't say sir that time. Went white. I saw red. I blacked out. And when I came to, I was here in a detention centre. How long were you out? Days? Um, might I ask, what happened to your hand? Sir, there was no one to bandage me, sir. So I did what I could to wrap it up, sir. A bandage on his hand. Just like Miss Sky. See you later, Dogma. I hope work is better today than it was yesterday. Yet another similarity between this case and the one at the prosecutor's office. First things first, tell us how you hurt your hand. Um, I don't mean to pry, but you are the perpetrator, correct? You killed Detective Bruce Goodman in the evidence room, right? Sir, please don't look at me with those sad puppy dog eyes, sir. If you have to label me as a perpetrator or a victim, sir, then label me victim. Um, I would, but you happen to be in detention and alive and well at that. Ah, uh, yes, well, that's true, sir. I suppose you could say that. Did you know the victim, Detective Goodman? Well, sir, if I had to label, to hit, label him as a stranger or a total stranger, then I'd say he leans heavily on the total stranger side. So, you didn't know him. Sir, I worked in a tiny department devoid of light or any other creature comforts. I don't know any detectives. So if he was a total stranger, why did you stab him? Sir, I had n no intention of killing him, sir. None. N nor do I have any recollection of killing him, sir. At least someone around here is more confused than I am. About your hand. Did that happen during the course of the crime? Well, you see, sir. I, uh... Don't you think you should just confess? But, sir, sir, but... There was nothing I could do. Nothing you could do. Sir, to tell the truth, sir, when it happened... When the detective pointed that knife at me, I just hollered, sir. And the next thing I knew, I was unconscious. The next thing you knew, you were, huh? Then when I opened my eyes, 
I was alone in the evidence room, sir. All alone. Alone because... Because Detective Goodman had disappeared. What? Then when I looked down, I was gushing blood from my hands, sir. Oh, the shock. Oh, the sorrow, sir. Can you imagine how I felt? The victim's body disappeared. Hmm. That's some story. Um, do you think you could take a look at this? Hey, that's it, sir. That's it. That's it. That's what? My head was a blank until this very moment. But, sir, now I remember. I remember, sir. You mean you remember what happened? Correct. That card. That card was the cause of it all. This ID card? Exactly, sir. That's exactly it. Nothing could be more exact, sir. Nothing. I better pry into this one, one a little bit deeper. Officer Meekins, could you take a look at this? I'm sorry, sir. Really sorry, but I have no idea what this is, that is. Maybe you should ask Mr. Edgeworth, sir. He's passing the buck, Mr. Wright. It takes a special kind of man to pass the buck to Edgeworth. Eek! Uh, I'm scared of knives, sir. It's okay. That's it, sir. Last night, sir. That's the one. I was an apple, sir. In my dream, sir. And I was... And I hope it was... I was being peeled. What? On second thought, you don't need to... You don't have to look at the knife. Hmm, he's overreacting to the knife, but I guess he's been through a lot. Officer Meekins, can you take a look at this? I gotta show them everything, guys. At least his, his his thing is a little shorter than the woman's. Boo, 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 boo. Hey, why do you have that? That's from the day it was taken at the prosecutor's office. The day that Detective Goodman's body was found in the trunk. This means, this means I'm a free man, innocent. If this is a dream, sir, then I hope I never wake up. If this is a dream, you'd better wake up right now. Is he gonna do the same if I show him this? Who dreams about being an apple? Officer Meekins, can you take a look at this? Right. Here we go. Can you tell us what it is you do remember? Well, sir, you might say I'm a lost old patrolman, lost old lamb, if you will. I didn't know Mr. Detective Goodman, who was in the evidence room, and that's why you thought he looked suspicious. Sir, I entered the evidence room and asked the man to show me his ID card. Well, that sounds pretty much by the book so far. Th that's right, sir. That's what I've been trying to tell you. So you asked Detective Goodman to show his ID card. What did he do? That's the thing. Suddenly he pointed a knife at me. What? Sir, I assure you, I was as flustered as you are right now. So I whooped and leapt at him. Detective Goodman pointed a knife at him. Do unto others before they do unto you. My own father's word, sir. But what happened then? Well, my eyes, sir. Everything went white. When I awoke, I was here. Right. So, Officer Meekins, why was it that they arrested you? What do you mean, Emma? Let's look at what we know. Now, Officer Meekins didn't know Detective Goodman, and the victim whom he met at the scene of the crime didn't show his ID card. In other words, we have no way of knowing if the victim was really the victim. And if this body just disappeared from the evidence room, we don't even know if anyone actually died. That's it, sir. That. That's what I wanted to say. That is, I did say something along those lines. Huh? But you still ended up here. He told me that it had to be him, sir. On that day, at that time, Detective Goodman was definitely in the evidence room. That's what they said. But you don't remember the events clearly. No, but the videotape is quite clear. Huh? Videotape? From the security camera. The crime, my crime, the crime I swore to stamp out. It's there, it's me, it's on tape. And you waited until now to tell us this. I'm sorry, really sorry, sir. I'll hand over my badge. I don't deserve it. No thanks, I have my own. Well, guess we better go check out the crime scene. You see, as much as I like dumb characters, I don't like him.
Wait, is this not where I was meant to be? Let's just walk in. It won't open. Well, where am I going then? Back here? special kind of dumbass that he is that he is there we go hey hey mr wright look who's standing at the chief of detectives desk it's police chief gant and you're sure this is all hmm you know what it means, if there's anything missing. Sir, I'm sure it's most like to likely totally perfect. We oh my god, why do I keep doing that? I should have plugged in my PlayStation 5 bucket on PlayStation controller and not this one. Why am I using this controller? Under his seat cushion, behind his computer monitor, inside his personal coffee machine. I see. Well, if anything does turn up, you call me right away, deal? Y y y yes, sir. We'll scour the place again, sir. Chief of Detectives looks a little flustered. Aha, right, oh my boy. How you been? Swim much? Oh ho ho, Chief Grant, reporting for duty, sir. Why are you saluting him, Mr. Wright? Um, is Edgeworth going to be okay? A oh, worthy? Oh, you know, they're, they're doing a little inquiry committee with him. Sounds like an inquisition. Yep, well, they've had no end of trouble with the boys since last year. You mean the incident board lake? It doesn't look good having a top prosecutor sit in a defendant seat, does it? And you, you got someone else found guilty in that case, right, right, oh. Von Karma. A legend he was, undefeated in his 40 year career. But in court, you fixed it so he was caught for forging evidence. Well, wait, I didn't do anything wrong. He did forge evidence. In any case, the prosecutor's office is in a bit of turmoil, you might say. Why, they do just about anything to restore the reputation. Now, depending on what that inquiry committee decides, it could be bad for Worthy. But what? It's downright odd, I tell you. The detective getting killed on their turf, too, I mean. There being the prosecutors, I assume. Scientifically speaking, it's impossible. Yes, but that's what the evidence is saying. Goodman was stabbed in two locations at the same time, and that's what it says. What if the evidence is this? Now, now, right, oh, I can't give away all our secrets just like that. And this is, this in particular, well, it's a little sensitive, and I can't talk about it. I wasn't expecting much anyway. You know, one thing I hate most of all is hiding stuff, secrets, can't stand them. But you know, it's a full-time job just keeping the chief of detectives trapped shut. Uh, he was the one you were picking on earlier. Huh? You saw that? Whoops. I wonder what it was was that he wanted the chief of detectives to do. Let's see if we can kind of discreetly ask him. Oh, does he need this? I was wondering, could you take a look at this? I'm oh, sorry, Rido. I'm thorough with, my, with that stuff. Thorough, I say. Go find the guy who can't seem to sit still out there. The busy one. The guy who can't sit still. Does he mean Detective Gumshoe? Either him or the dancing blue badger. Oh god. Why why is there no so fucking long? Just say no, I'm not gonna look at it. Oh my god, this is painful. Thankfully, I didn't need to do. Just say no. You can just say no if you want it. I'm over halfway there. I might as well show him everything. At this point, I might as well just continue doing what I'm doing, right? Oh my god, now I'm just pressing buttons randomly.
So I'm guessing this tape is actually going to be for him then. What does he say to my badge? I was wondering if he... He doesn't even say anything to my badge? Right. We're moving. I still love this song. She's a pumpy dancing around like crazy. Where is our boy? We did run off to the... Where is he? Somebody else to talk to him. Wait. He didn't want the steak. Where am I going then? And who does this is steak for? Spray every room. Okay. I would have liked the badger to be splattered in blood, you know, like a true, like a true legend. I've got to the point where I have no idea what I'm gonna and what I'm doing, so I'm just gonna spray everything. I don't know where I'm meant to go. Um, I think the only place I haven't gone back to I, I'm I'm trying to use my tiny brain, my pea-sized brain. I know they could use a cassette tape. What crafty trick! That gun shop was a fake. This is good. No one will expect a cassette tape in this day and age. He's not writing a report, he's writing a novel. I'm oh, sorry, you had to see that. Uh, what exactly did the piece of chief of police want me to do? 
Well, see you over there. That's Goodman's desk. You want me to check it for anything that might be a clue? They took away every last piece of garbage in the trash can. So nothing belong belonging to Go Detective Goodman is still here. Of course not. Well, except for this. What? You kept something? Sure, why not? It's not important. You didn't even finish writing it. It's a lost item report, but it's only half complete. A lost item. Did Detective Goodman lose something? The date on it is February 21st. Better make a note of that just in case. Should really get back to the investigating the police. Oh my god. Oh my god. Was that all I needed? Was that all I needed to do? Why would you even think of doing that? Like, that's never helped. Like, how many cases have we done? And that man has not helped us at all. Why would you ever think of doing that? Explain to me why. Uh. I won't say this case has some slightly frustrating bits. Like if they had ever in the five cases, it is five cases, or is it four cases? No, it is five cases. Well, four cases. <laughs> Objection. Objection. I will say that. We still can't get in there. Wait. Oh, for fuck's sake. Actually, I was wondering if I could ask you a favour, hmm? Well, I never thought the day would come when Wright will ask me for help. I was wondering if we could investigate the evidence room. Now, right, Earl. Uh, actually, I'm sorry. I, I don't need to investigate after all. Right, well, please. Do I look like a selfish man, huh? Heck, if anyone asks me, sir, can I borrow $50? I'd give them $50, no problem. So go ahead, investigate that room to your heart's content. Knock yourself out. This goes to show you never know until you ask. And for you, here you can borrow this. But hey, this is a detective's ID card, isn't it? That's a special card for guests, so don't lose it. Y yes, sir, it's an honor. You just run along and do your best now. Later, folks. Hehe, <laughs> it looks pretty cool on my label, doesn't it? Just think, a real ID. You seem happy. Yes, sir, because, sir, we get to go to the evidence room now, sir. I think this place is a bad influence on the girl. Ah... <sighs> The evidence room is beyond that door, and we have the ID card from Chief Grant. Let's just walk in. Walk open. Aha, the card reader is turned off, see? What is that security guard thinking? Howdy, partners. Well, well, what's made my Babina sky so grey? Uh, Officer Marshall, why does it have to be him? What do you mean, why does it have to be him? Look at the fucking room! What's that? Why does it have to be him look for? As you may have summarized, this here this here's my saloon. Um, we're here to investigate the crime scene. Yeehaw, that card you got there on your chest. That be that's better than a sheriff badge in these parts. Yeehaw? Well, what are you standing there for? Get along, little doggies. The crime scene's awaiting. Looks like the card reads on again. While we're here, I was wondering if we could ask you some questions. Sorry, cowboy, but I've got no mind to tangle with you hombres. You're busy then. Did I say that? I only said I didn't wish to speak with you. Actually, you said you had no mind to tangle with us hombres. Um, I was wondering if we could talk to you. Sorry, Bambina, but I'm off to roam the land for tumbleweed on the wide prairie. Like a gunslinger loading his six shooter, I say a little prayer. Grork? What's Grork mean? What's all that about, Mr. Wright? I think he was just too hungry to talk. 
I'm just saying that because his stomach is growling. You have no idea what he was talking about either. Well, any case, we need to get cracking on this investigation pronto. Well... <laughs> that smell. That reminds me of Texas. So, Officer Marshall, you're from Texas. No, I just saw a special on television the other day. Is this from my baby? Oh uh, yeah, Miss Star. Well, what's this? What? What's wrong? A fillet steak lunch? I see, I see. I don't see. I wonder what it means. Steak lunch given to Officer Marshall. Alright, Bambina, you win. Ask m the the Fine, it seems like he's willing to talk. Alright, we can talk to him now. Officer Marshall, you're in charge of security for the evidence room, right? You got good eyes, partner. It's an easy job, and I'm grateful for it. Actually, Officer Meekins at the detention centre told us. Ah, that poor little doggy. Poor guy. I keep getting his name wrong, calling him Meekly. He told us something. He said that when the stabbing occurred, you weren't at your station. Well, maybe I shouldn't be telling you this, but since I got demoted from detective two years ago, well, it might not look it, but I lost my fire for the job, you know? I mean, you're an alcoholic, mate. So what were you doing around 5.15 when the murder took place? Well, I reckon I was galloping down the highway on the back of my steed, Zippy. Oh my god. Well, don't you have anything better to do? Don't you have anything better to do than make me stretch? All right, where is movements, share yoga? Uh, stretch out my arms. No, he was riding down the highway and his horse named Zippy. There's no need for people here anyhow. These newfound machines do a bang up job of keeping an eye on the place. You mean the security camera system. I don't take the machines much. Kind of like that stewed broccoli they sneak in next to your steak, you know? Doing this one-handed, it's not fun. I'm going to be so stretched out today. Miss Star told us something. She said that you were a detective until two years ago. It was always my dream to be a raw, raw hide wrangler on the scene of a crime. That's all gone now, like a drinking hole in a prairie fire. You're still investigating the SL9 incident with Miss Star, aren't you? That was my case. It's all solved in the record books, but it smells like a bad game of poker. I can't let it go. That's all there is to it. What kind of case was it, anyway? We've heard the name so many times, but no one tells us what actually happened. There are some things you're better off not knowing, Bambina. Anyway, that case is officially dead as of two days ago. Two days ago? The day of our case. That's right. The evidence transferals. Edgeworth was talking about the transferals too. Right. I, I know what maybe two of the machines in here do. Uh, only two of them? There must be do a dozen. Like I said, Bambina, me and machines, well, I like them about as much as I like stewed cauliflower with my steaks. The easiest ones to understand are these here security cameras. Those are the ones that Officer Meekins mentioned. If nothing happens, the tapes are automatically erased every few hours. And Officer Meekins and Detective Goodman are there. Are they on one of those tapes? I reckon they might be. The security guard, and you reckon? One more thing. When you go into the evidence room, you need an ID card. That's the card reader by the door. The card reader leaves a record of every ID card that passes through. So this is the ID card record. Hey, I've seen that somewhere before. Sorry, Bambina. I can't show you more than that. Huh? I haven't heard whether this is related to the case yet. Mr. Wright, I saw a number on that record just now. I've seen that number before. Maybe there's some way I can prove the record is tied to the stabbing. Sorry, but could you explain what this whole transferal thing is about? We keep only evidence from solved cases in this room. They're kept here under the pre presiding detective's supervision for two years, so we can reinvestigate them if it turns out there was a mistake, see? So what happens to the evidence after two years? It goes to sleep forever in the underground vault of the county sheriff's department. 
That's what we call transferal. We do it every February. I see now. Transferal is like a funeral for old cases. Two years after a case is solved, it's closed forever, dead. Never to be reopened again, never to be reinvestigated. And that happened to SO9 two days ago. Do you want to see anything else? The sheriff's back in the Wild West didn't place much faith in evidence. About the only thing they trusted was their shooting hand. Um, this is neither wild nor west here. Aha. But that and this are two different things entirely. I, I guess so, huh? I'm lost. Looks like we need some evidence to get anywhere with this guy. But I think I'm just gonna have to go into the fucking room, to be fair. I think I need to just go into the room. Wait! Wait! Wait, he- He scribbled out a 9! His- he's put 5-9 as his ID! February 23rd, Evidence Room, Sector 3. It's quiet, the investigation must be over here. So this is the Evidence Room. It really is kind of like a graveyard. Graveyards are supposed to have grass and trees. This feels more like a morgue. A nice try, M Mr. Wright. You, you can't scare me. I mean, it literally looks like a morgue. Wait! Is that my... Is that my metal detector? So sorry, I thought you were a ghost. I wouldn't recommend going around smacking ghosts in the head, pal. So is it true what I heard? Right, oh, please do... do Please, do I look like a selfish man? Heck, if anyone asks me, sir, can I borrow 50 quid? I'd give them 50 quid, no problem. So go ahead, investigate that room to your heart's desire. Knock yourself out. Yeah, it's true. So Chief of Police Gang will loan anyone 50 bucks, even me? Oh, so that's what you were talking about. Actually, I was put in charge of the investigation for the day. Just for today? Boss for a day. So guess what? You got permission from the Chief, so now you're a boss for a day. Gee, thanks. First of all, you want to have this. I'm guessing that's because we're gonna... We're, we're gonna be spraying. Allow me to say one thing, speaking as a detective. Let's see if... Wait, no. I didn't want to talk to you about that. Wait, no. I need to go into examine mode. And then do this. I've got a hand! Why am I getting a reaction here? There's no reason for the murder to, murderer to touch this spot if he fled out of the door. This just might be something significant. Hey, that's some pretty amazing stuff you've got there, pal. What, this? It's called luminal testing fluid. Where'd you get your hands on that? Huh? I'd like to get some too. I'll just borrow 50 bucks from the chief. <laughs> what are you... Where do you get this, Emma? I always buy it by mail order. Well, I better jot this down on the floor plans. Only one hand with three fingers? I mean, it'd be easy to find then, right? Right, right. That's my, that's my metal detector, guys. Slide. Another hand print up there, isn't there? There must have been one massive pool of blood. Never seen anything like it. I'm not a professional. What's your opinion, detective? Hmm. Pale blue blood. Maybe Detective Goodman was actually an alien. This proves that something really happened in front of this locker. I'll make a note of it on the floor plan. Hey, if you didn't want my opinion, you shouldn't have asked. I liked your opinion, buddy. Don't you worry about it. I knew it. This is someone's right hand print. What? What's the matter, detective? With this locket, it's mine. It's yours? Please. You have to help me. When they come to take me away, promise you'll testify that I wouldn't harm a fly. You do that for me, won't you, pals? This is an important clue. I'll try it down on the floor plans. I'm counting on you guys. Believe me, you can't trust the police. <laughs> this is why he's the best character, guys. The police officer shouted, Trust me, you can't trust the police! Right. That might be it. Let me just examine now. 
Someone left a glove here, but only one. Detective Gumshoe, maybe. There you go, pal. Making me out to be some kind of absent-minded detective. That's evidence from the case, you know. I mean, SL9. It does have a tag on it. Rubber glove added to the court record. Look, this one's open, and the red indicator light above the door is lit. That locker is co coded with Detective Goodman's fingerprint. Detective Goodman's locker. Are you sure it's okay to leave it open like that? Well, it'd be hard to get it open again if we closed it. It's empty. They must have taken the contents elsewhere. Wow, someone must have broken something big to make all these pieces. Detective Gumshoe, perhaps. There you go, pal. Making me out to be some kind of hooligan. That's apparently from the case. The case? The SL9 incident, pal. See the sticker on one of the pieces there? Another piece of SL9 evidence. Take a closer look. I wonder what shape these pieces were in before, whatever it was broke. You want to try to put it back together? Ha, good luck, pal. There's no, this, uh, that's no job for amateurs. Why, well, I spent a good three hours on that before. I, I had to give up. That's why I always carry around a tube of glue. Well, this piece looks like the bottom. Let's try putting the rest in place. Right. Oh God. Jacket edge on it. Stop it. Ah, there. Longest part though. No, it didn't look like it was right. There we go. Oh, that. There we go. saying there we go every time oh my god that is such a stupid thing to be telling me ah maybe that all right there we go There. Wait, these are the only two pieces I've got left. Oh my god, that did not look like it should have gone there. Well, we got it. Haha. Uh -huh. Well, I think we did it. But some of the pieces are missing. Yeah, I got that far too in two minutes myself. The problem is finishing it. With some pieces stolen, I bet they were missing to begin with. Still, it doesn't look like the most stable kind of jar. I kind of understand how it got broken. A stable jar added to the court record. Right. Well, that was fun. Put these pieces together makes a jar. The two things that bother me. One, why are some of the pieces missing? Two, doesn't it seem to be a little unstable? No wonder it broke. I'll make sure to remember that next time I make a jar. Have a good luck. Well, what's this? Blood? It's a little worn, but there's definitely a handprint there. It looks like someone tried to rip it off. Mr. Wright, 
wipe it, wipe it off, not rip it off. I just literally realized what I was saying. Whether there are other bloodstains left in the room, we should use the testing food to find out. I found, I found the other blood. This place is stuffed with evidence, stuffed with dreams. I'm not so sure about the dreams. Hmm. It won't open. Did you really think it would? Hey, power. Security is high tech around here. What's this paint? What is the storm paint doing here? Since the dawn of time, true art has always been a war against oppression. True art? I noticed that there's blue and yellow paint here. Perhaps we're witnessing the birthplace of the blue badger. Well, you might say this is my studio. Here, in the evidence room? He's precious. He's so precious. Some sort of bulky equipment is gathering dust here. What a sorry looking fishing pole that is. Ah, that's my personal pole. I never did get around to using it. Wait, I've seen that somewhere before. Right, pal, that's the metal detector. The one that led to the solving of the case out of Gord Lake, remember? Oh, right. Wow, that feels like it was ages ago. And, hmm, I don't think I've seen this one before. Oh, that? That's a bug sweeper. I'm sure it'll come in handy in solving some case sooner or later. That cheap looking box? You can't judge a person or a machine by their cover. You've got to look at that heart. We will. Wow, look at this big pile of junk in the corner. That looks like a cardboard. There's a pair of handcuffs attached to the frame. Maybe the guy they caught was some sort of escape artist and got away. Hey, that's one of the human profiles for range testing. He's been shot square in the forehead. Better than him than us. There's something sticking out of here. Looks like a shirt. I guess there must be evidence for some case. I wonder if Detective Gumshoe put this here. There you go, pal. Making me out to be some kind of swab. I'm not responsible for the evidence here. That said, I bet that evidence locker was opened recently. How do you know? If you leave things hanging out like that, the evidence gets dirty or ripped. The guard checks on that kind of stuff and notifies the detective responsible. How many times have I had my had him breathing down my neck about some silly evidence? Sounds like Detective Gumshoe leaves evidence hanging out a lot too. I bet he doesn't tuck in his shirt under that trench coat either. If you're gonna talk behind someone's back, don't do it in front of them, pal. True. Alright, let's talk to him. So, Detective Gumshoe, your boss for the day. That's right, it's an honor. After all, the murder took place right here in the police department. But if you're a boss, why are you all alone? Where are your underlings? They're using yesterday's findings to prepare for tomorrow's trial. In other words, you got kicked out of the investigation again. I'm adamant, though. I'm going to take control and put this case to rest. My in my own evidence locker, pal. You have a locker in here too, Detective Gumshoe. Of course. I am a detective after all. They gave me a locker that only I can open, pal. Only you can open? I'll always believe in Mr. Edgeworth, no matter what happens. So, Mr. Edgeworth is, worth, is with the inquiry committee right now, right? They're trying to figure out who's responsible for the mess up in court today. I see. I guess this is what you call fame. Mr. Edgeworth just, does, just can't get away from that case. That case? Yeah, that case. The SL9 incident, of course. That was the beginning of the end for Mr. Edgeworth. Maybe we can get him to tell us more about the case. This place is more high-tech than you might think. Every locker is fixed so that only one detective can open it. Using their ID card. Well, that's the thing, pal. ID cards can be lost. Why well, am I on my third card since entering the force already? That sounds like a lot. Yeah, but even I can't use my own right hand. Right hand? Oh, you mean your fingerprint? Exactly, pal. The locker for each lo the lock for each locker is coded with a fingerprint. So the only locker we can open is our own. Funny, they look like normal lockers. These are the latest model. There's a trick to the handles. See the handles? On the other side of the handle is a sensor, and if the wrong person touches it, bzzz, you get a shot. If that's what happened, my hand would be black and smoking every day. In any case, the locks aren't that obvious. There are even some people in the forest that don't know about the fingerprint locks. Can we look in his locker now? He opened it. I want to see in your locker. I want to see who the picture was on your locker. Detective, here's my attorney's badge. You sell that to me every time we meet, pal. Oh, fuck. No, get out. I didn't mean to do that. You can't open the lockers if you think it doesn't match. If you can open it, they'll give you 50 cents. No, the police department lacks faith in its lock system. After all, Detective Goodman is stabbed here after opening this locker. By the same time, he was found dead over the prosecutor's office. 
Allow me to say one thing, speaking as a detective. If I see a piece of evidence I know nothing about, I say nothing. Nothing. That's fine. You bet it's fine, pal. Alright. Take Goodman's note, and that's Switch Fake Knife. I bet Edgeworth was the most surprised of anyone because of the SL9 connection. That was Mr. Edgeworth's first big case, you know, two years ago. That was the first time the world knew Edgeworth was a man to be feared. But why would evidence come from that case turn up now? I guess it's not over, pal. Maybe there was some loose ends left on that case. Okay. As you can tell us about it, that Miss Star is quite the lady. Why well, remember it? It was winter. I was 16. Have a good lurk as well, Candle. She was the only one who ever got me to talk about what happened. 16. That's how old I am now. I wonder what happened. I wonder if Detective Gumshoe wore a trench coat in high school too. He definitely did. Alright, I was gonna say the same. I'm gonna say the same with that. Will he talk about his little friend, though? This is my crowning achievement, my masterpiece, you might say. But art is always misunderstood, pal. Art? He was dancing proudly on the day of the award ceremony, but there were a lot of people coming and going after the ceremony, so he took the blue badger away for a while. Really? Why? Oh, he said it was shameful or something like that. Shameful? I told night and day. I sympathise with Detective Gumshoe, but I can see why they moved it. Right, is there anything else I could talk to him about? Yes. Now that was a bloody violent case. Violent? So it was a murder. A serial killing. A serial killing? Maybe I don't want to get involved in this after all. But the killer made a mistake and Mr. Edgeworth felt his case around that to nab him. And this was two years ago. That put Mr. Edgeworth right in the spotlight and started the rumour mill. Rumours? About forged evidence? It was supposed to be all cleaned up with the transfer the other day. It was the last job he ever did. Detective Goodman, that is. Huh? What do you mean? Detective Goodman was the detective in charge of the SL9 incident, see? So, so, that switchblade knife. The victim took the knife out of the evidence locker himself. Do I have to... wait. Was he done here? Sheriff's back in- wait, no. That- that's his no. Wait, did I ever show him this? See this? This is the victim's ID card. Ah, uh, the one that was on the ground in the parking lot. The number on this is 5842189. Officer Marshall, show us the ID card record again. Oh, wait. This is what I missed. Look, the fourth number. It's a perfect match. It was used at 415. 515. 514? I do that all the time with fives and fours. Right before the stabbing. What's more, there's only one of them cards in the world. So when the incident occurred, Detective Goodman was in the evidence room. But wait, what did Officer Meekin say? Sorry, I entered the evidence room and asked the man to display his ID card. She asked Detective Goodman to show his card. What did he do? That's the thing. Suddenly he pointed a knife at me. If he had his ID card, then why would he have pointed a knife at Officer Meekin's? Alright, compadre, you win. I guess I can give you this ID card record. Got an idea. Maybe I should show this this to other people with IDs here. Alright.
Could you take a look at this? This is the ID card re record of the people who came in, the in here on the day of the stabbing. I heard the rumors, so let's pick- Whoa! Well, what is it? The, 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 that second number, it's not your ID number, is it, Detective Gumshoe? Mr. Edgeworth, what? The second number on this list belongs to Mr. Edgeworth. What? What? How does he know his number so well? D card record updated. Why would Edgeworth have come to the evidence room? Hey pal, look at the time. Was there something you needed to be going to do? It's just that Mr. Edgeworth's inquiry committee should be letting out soon. I'm going to go give him my report for the day. It might help, you know? For a report? You mean the note written on the back of that flyer? The one that says nothing but no problems? Hey, it's Mr. Edgeworth we're talking about. I'm sure he can use a report like this. I believe in him. Who needs enemies when you've got friends like Detective Gumshoe? I'm off, pal. Later. I should probably see what Edgeworth has to say too. Right, we can go and talk to Edgeworth now. Good. Move. Uh, no there. And move. There. Then move. There. There we go. Oh my god, it's him. I guess. My apologies. Oh, it's you. Have we met somewhere? Huh? Mr. Edgeworth, I beg you leave so long. Is Edgeworth here? There, standing by the window, a teacup in his hand. Right. He asked the hotel bring him tea service. Mr. Edgeworth, you're back from the district prosecutor's office inquiry. I am. By the way, Detective Gumshoe was looking for you. Ah, uh, yes. He brought me the latest information, it seems. Really? Was it helpful? Apparently a new French restaurant is opening near here. I think he was trying to con console me somehow. Um, the real info is on the other side, Edgeworth. Poor Mr. Edgeworth. I think this whole thing is really taking a toll on him. Can I present him some stuff? Oh, right. I better check this now. As I was saying, I... What's this? A record of ID card usage? Edgeworth, you went into the evidence room that day, didn't you? Just before the incident occurred, no less. Yes, that's true. But why? Mr. Edgeworth, please don't look at me like that. I was asked to go. By Chief Dant, no less. The Chief of Police? He wanted evidence for a case that wrapped up half a year ago. He told me he wanted me to keep it here in the, in the prosecutor's office. But it was solved, right? It would have to be it would have to be if the evidence was already filed. The chief has never wanted to explain himself. Any in any case, on the day of the stabbings, I brought this back here. Can I ask what kind of case it was? I can't say. It really has nothing to do with the current case. Now I'm curious about the other case. I better make a note of it. Stubborn as always, I told you this has nothing to do with the current case. Right, please. I'm the prosecutor on this case. You don't expect me to sit here and discuss the case with you over a cup of tea. I'll pass on the tea. Just tell me about the case. Mr. Wright, Mr. Edgeworth just told you no in a very polite manner. Whose side are you on anyway? Right, that's his no one, I'm guessing. Maybe I'll just show him my best evidence. I can get some reaction out of him. Well, it's not that. It's not this. Maybe it was just the locker thing. Maybe that was the only thing I needed to show him. I haven't talked to him yet either, to be fair. Fine. So, how did the inquiry committee go? I actually decided to treat this not as a case of concealing evidence, but as a communication there during the investigation. Concealing evidence? Yes, apparently there are some who believe that I concealed evidence. They gave me a warning. You were lucky this time again. Again? I've heard them say that so many times. Ever since that case two years ago. Are you okay for the trial tomorrow? Well, I'm still the presiding prosecuting attorney. However, something happened. They gave control of the investigation over to the police department. The police department? Yes, any further investigation for this case will be directed by the chief of police, Dan. I can do nothing but wait for his results. I see. Why, I ask you, why? All along, I've done only what I believe is right. I have nothing to be ashamed of. But still, well, I've never seen him this out of sorts. Well, what else have I got to ask him? Right, 
Right, please, in the prosecutor's case. Just tell me something, buddy. Anything. Can I show him the switchblade? I know you, you've probably got a hold of some information already, right? It all has to do with the case you were on, the SL9 incident, and some dark suspicion you were wrapped up in. You are the man who revived the worst memory of my life. I figured I'd be telling you about that this sooner or later. He must be talking about his father's murder in the elevator. Okay, Edgeworth, why don't you tell me about it? Tell me the truth. Right. This is what I needed. The SL9 incident was a heinous serial killing case. The head of the investigation was Deputy Chief of Police at the time. Damon Gang. That was that wacky old coot was involved in the case two years ago too then. He was a top officer and it was my first time working with him. I was nervous. Wow, you get nervous too, Mr. Edgeworth. What I want to know is why I was a deputy chief of police for police on the investigation. In truth, I used slightly more extreme methods than normal. We were dealing with a vicious murderer. If I let him go, the blood would be on my hands. We won our guilty verdict and the killer was executed. Wait, you didn't? Of course not. I didn't touch the evidence. Yes, I would do anything in my power to win a trial. However, I do have a code and I follow it faithfully. By the way, Emma, the chief of prosecutor wanted to know something. My, my sister, what? If you were still studying forensic science, huh? Y yes, of course. Well, just today, Mr. Wright and I were using this. Aluminum testing fluid, hmm? Well then, you might have use for this. Aluminum powder for taking fingerprints. It's been chemically treated for better adhesion. For, for me? Are you sure? We are the enemy, you know. I've no say in today's investigation. Do as you will. Edgeworth, I'm really... No need to thank me. Here, take your powder in the, these fingerprint files for everyone involved. I, uh, for thanks. How about giving those to Detective Gumshoe as well? I mean, Gumshoe wouldn't know what to do with them. Well, let's get going. One last investigation. Right, I do seem to remember some of the suspicious handprints somewhere. Right, so that's back. I mean, there was only two fing uh, handprints. Fingerprints, handprints. Uh, move. There. Move. There. Move. Gumshoe would choose it to powder his donuts. Look, if you were anyone in this game, Lael, it is Gumshoe, you would know. Our investigation turned up a suspicious handprint. Here, in this blood and detective's evidence locker. Let's use a secret weapon we just borrowed. Right, let's get started. First, choose a finger. A finger? Each finger leaves behind a slightly different imprint. So let's choose the finger that will will have left behind the clearest print. I really can't tell the difference at a glance. Quit procrastinating and choose a finger. Uh, this one? That one. Okay, now it's time to check the prints. Let me show you how it's done. Emma's starting to get the sparkle in her eyes. First, we sprinkle the aluminum powder around. Huh? How do you do that? With this, see? Ah, it looks like that did the trick. The aluminum powder adheres completely to the print. Once the powder is well spread, just blow away the excess. Huh? How do I do that? With E, exciting, I know. Imagine you're blowing up the candles on a birthday cake, see? Wow, that looks like fun. It might take some getting used to, though. It's fine, it won't go up your nose or anything. You just pour the powder on thick and blow away the extra. Those are the basics of fingerprinting, Mr. Wright. I guess I better give it a try. I mean... Can I just powder the whole screen? Oh my god, I can. How much powder do I have? I have the power, guys. You know what? We were joking about giving it to Gumshoe. They shouldn't have given it to us. Aha, you did it. You found one. But this looks nothing like a fingerprint. Hmm. Now that you mention it, I guess it doesn't. What does it mean? I think it means we're out of luck. Out of luck? The person who left this handprint must have worn gloves. 
Don't tell me we've been wasting our time here. Hey, calm down. That's just the way it goes sometimes with scientific investigations. How's your mech go going? Hello. How is building the big boy? It does seem a shame. While we're at it, why don't we look for other prints? Other prints? Looking at the locker door again closely. Oh, there's one next to it. It seems like there are fingerprints outside that bloody handprint as well. Only one foot down? Let's see if we can get a clear print. Hmm, fingerprints outside the blood. It's right there, buddy. Right there. There we go. Oh, wait, no. I did it. Do I need more? Is it not enough? Do I have to dust everything? Am I missing something? Don't worry. You, you guys like this. Yeah, print. So clear it's dazzling. The dazzling. Anyway, this print took a lot of effort to find. Let's match it up right away. So we're not done yet. This is quite a process. Well, there's no point in finding a fingerprint and not knowing who the owner is, right? I guess she's right. Look at the fingerprint data we got from Mr. Edgeworth and point out the person you think left these prints. Huh? How am I supposed to know who it is? I could make a pretty good guess. The bloody handprint and the fingerprint are in different places, right? That means that the prints probably don't have anything to do with our case. So whose fingerprints would we most likely find in this evidence locker? Well, Gumshoes, obviously. Where is he? Yeah. Took a break for pizza and hanging. How is the football going? Aha! So these prints belong to Detective Gumshoe. Something wrong, Mr. Wright? You gave me this so what look. I guess that's probably because I was thinking, so what? Okay, so we come up with nothing this time, but there's always next time. Sometimes you hit, sometimes you miss. Don't know yet? You gotta roll with the punches, Mr. Wright. Thanks for the sympathy. Wait, if I remember correctly, there was one other handprint in this room. Let's check it out. It was here, wasn't it? Uh, I just... There. Right, there was a handprint here. Okay, I'm gonna try using this. There, yeah, go on, let's do it. Oh, but I have to warn you about something first. What? The area of the blood was wiped away, right? We only ended up finding it using chemical means. Any prints in that area will have been wiped away too. Oh, right, so that means no prints. Would you say the probability of your hypothesis is high? But don't ask me. Anyway, we must try to find prints that weren't wiped away. Prints other than that one left by a bloody hand. That weren't left by a bloody hand. What? Uh, on the locker? I mean, thankfully, they're just gonna wait until I click on the right place, apparently. I don't see anything! Wait, wait, wait! There we go. I will dust the fuck out of this. Look at this. So much dust. There we go. Hmm, I gave him my best shot. That kind of result won't be any good for matching prints, will it? But it doesn't look like we'll get a clearer result from this print. Okay, let's try a different finger then. Oh, so it's we have to guess where the other fingers would be. Alright, I get it. I get it. So that was probably the thumb. That's the same thing. So that, there, there we go. Look at this, this is a fucking chunky looking finger.
See, I love things like this in detective games. Wait, that looks like... That looks like his. It's not that one. It's not that one. Most of these are worlds. Oh, no, it's his. It looks very close to his, though. Oh, I see where the differences are, though. And they've literally just... It, it's literally just an obvious match. It's not that difficult. It's not trying to, you know, make me think hard about it. Hey, these fingerprints, they... Whose are they? Whose? Is it someone I know? It's Officer Marshall. Huh? Uh, Officer Jake Marshall? Now that's gotta be a coincidence. He's not involved in the crime. Emma. This is decidedly different from Detective Gumshoe's prints. The luminal reaction. The blood and the fingerprints are in the same place. Oh. Oh. So we have Jake Marshall's fingerprints. And a white blood stain. But why would Officer Marshall? It looks like our investigation is finally turning up some results. I guess this is what you call decisive evidence. I, I don't believe it. Aww. Holy crap! February 24th, 9.41am, District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. So what do you think, Mr. Wright? I think the prosecution is as confused as we are. After all, the victim was murdered in two different places at the same time, and a different suspect was arrested at each of the crime scenes. Lana, good morning, Mr. Wright. I apologize for yesterday. I was indisposed. I hope they didn't hold you too long for questioning. We just finished, actually. I'm used to all-nighters, though. So how'd it go? It's as Mr. Wright suspects, so please accrue this. I figured as much, so I struck a plea bargain. A plea bargain? What do you mean by that? What are you holy crapping? We agree that if I told them the truth behind this sim sim simultaneous murder, they wouldn't see capital punishment. That's what I mean, Emma. But Lana, don't tell me you. Much to my regret, I'm as much in the dark about this as they are. Photos? Oh my god! That's so great! This- You're not gonna have anywhere to put this guy! Like, literally, he's gonna be five times bigger than anything! As much in the dark about this as they are. Miss Guy, hmm? We found trace evidence of a certain person in the police department's evidence room. He belonged to Officer Jake Marshall. Like without the shoulders, it tops the green one? I mean, the green one was big and bulky, but he wasn't very tall, was he? Bloodstained fingerprints, to be exact. That's the trump card I have up my sleeve today. You do understand that th what this t means, don't you? In order to defend my sister, you're going to accuse Mr. Marshall. We have to play the cards with doubt. Isn't that right, Miss Sky? Do what you have to, Mr. Wright. District Court, courtroom number nine. Court is now in session for the trial of Miss Lana Sky. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution is... Hmm, I'm afraid you'll have to clarify. It takes 30 minutes by car to reach the police department for the prosecutor's office. Yet the victim, Bruce Goodman, was slain at both places at the same time. 
But that's not physically possible, is it? What's more, I hear the victim from the evidence room just disappeared. Yes, and the body eventually reappeared in the trunk of Mr. Edgeworth's car. Wow, this is one messed up trial. One of my duties as prosecutor is to present impartial evidence. Today, I will present evidence relating to the murder at the police department. In so doing, I believe the way in which we should proceed will reveal itself. And that's what sets Mr. Edgeworth apart. He sounds so on top of things. Even though he doesn't know what's going on himself, and that's supposed to be admirable, Trey. Yes. Very well, let the trial resume. On the day of the crime, what exactly transpired at the police department? Mr. Edgeworth, you may call your first witness of the day to the stand. For his first witness, the prosecution calls the suspect of the murder that occurred at the police department. The suspect, you mean the so-called murderer? Murderer. Oh boy. Things are getting wild from the get-go. Will the witness please state his name and occupation? Yes, sir. I am Officer Mike Meekin, sir. My occupation is, um, that would be murderer, sir. <laughs> uh, so you're telling us you're a professional killer. Sir, it was me, sir. I'm the one who did it. I'll never kill anyone again, sir. You've got to believe me, sir. Uh, actually, what we'd like to hear from you is, sir, I'm what you would call part of the younger generation, sir. A person whose action adults couldn't, can't possibly comprehend. Please, Mr. Edgeworth, sir, help me, sir. <laughs> Officer Meekins. Yeah, yes, sir. Give us your report of the crime. Consider that an order. Yes, sir, as you wish. After all, I am part of the generation that must be told what to do, sir. You can't fault him for a lack of enthusiasm. Crime report, sir. Although it's not my normal duty, I was assigned to guard the evidence room that day. I, sp I spotted a suspicious man on the security screen and rushed into the room. I was only doing what I was trained to do, sir. I was suddenly attacked. I fought for my life. Then I, I did it. After that, I passed out until the another officer smacked me away. Hmm. So the victim detective Goodman attacked you. Do unto, uh, do unto others before they do unto you. That's the Meekins family model, sir. I see. Then you fainted and a colleague kept you gain consciousness. Thank you. Right, I've got to be careful. I don't want to get anything on my new bed covers, but I also want to eat my garlic bread. Yes, sir. He knocked me up, up, me upside the head, sir. Very well. The defense may begin its cross examination. What I need here is much more information to work with. Mr. Meekins, you work in the General Affairs Department, do you not? Yes, sir. I am in charge of hiring new recruits, sir. Hey, welcome back again, 1L. Yikes, now there's a scary thought. Oh my god. I hope you're doing alright, buddy. Evidence transferal was taking place on the day of the crime, which meant many officers were given special tasks not ordinarily performed. I was in charge of guarding the Blue Badger, sir. Blue Badger? Yes, sir. The lovely police mask got created by the Chief of Detectives, sir. Yes! I was to ensure it wasn't broken during the transferal process. That was my sole mission for the day, sir. There's a jester though, not a badger. I've been complaining about the badger status this whole time. I see, sounds like a very important mission. After the award ceremony. What, well, when I finish Phoenix Wright? I don't know what I'm going to be doing on a Tuesday and a Thursday after Phoenix Wright, to be fair. There were so many people running around that I relocate the blue badge to the evidence room. Oh, so that's why you went to the evidence room. Tell us, what did you see when you got there? I'm eating and talking at the same time. I take um, suggestions if people suggest things and I can I either have them or can afford them. 
Just be warned that there are two more games in this group of games, so we might be on Ace Attorney for a little bit. What did you see when you got there? I spotted a suspicious man on the security screen. Uh, in order to enter the evidence room, you need an ID card, am I correct? Precisely, sir. I have one right he here, around my neck. So then, your ID number should be listed on here, right? There it is, I found it. This is the one right here. Can you please read us the number? Yes, sir. It's 49895696. That's my number, sir. I see. Huh. But the number 49895596. It should have been used twice. Please explain, witness. It's n no real mystery, sir. The first time is when I relocated the blue badge to the evidence room. And the second time is when I went to get go went to go get him after everything settled down. I see, so it's during that second time when Yes, sir, that was when I spotted the man on the security screen. What, do you have a suggestion, one L? So you were attacked. Can you please tell us exactly what happened to you? It was a knife, sir. A knife. Detective Goodman pulled a knife on you. What happened then? Well, with me in char well, with me charging in on him like that, he looked as surprised as I was. Nothing especially fair. You aren't exactly the kind of person someone would want to run into. Actually, you know what? I do have a game redeem. Uh, where is it? Because we've got to do Broken Sword after Shenmue on Saturdays. Um... Final Fantasy 13. We might be doing Final Fantasy 13. You aren't exactly the kind of person someone would want to run into. That's when I reacted, sir. I swung my arms like an octopus, struggling to detain him. That's how I got this gash on my hand. Maybe if you just kept your cool, your hand wouldn't be. When I saw the blood trickling down my arm, I panicked. I grabbed the man by his collar. I fought for my life, then I, I did it. What exactly do you mean when you say you did it? I know I don't look the type, but I'm really into kung fu films, sir. The man is guard down for just an instant, so I snatched his knife from him. You took his knife? I spun him around and performed a disarming maneuver. I made sure to close my eyes like a man. I, uh, see. He must have been desperate. The next thing I knew, his white coat was drenched in a sea of my blood, and then... And then the next thing I knew, yes, he punched me right in my face, sir. After that, I passed out into another officer smacking me awake. About what time did you regain consciousness? No offence, sir, but how am I supposed to know that? I was unconscious. Oh, right. According to the report that from the officer that woke up the witness, it was about 5.30. He hit me right in the head, too. I woke up crying tears of pain. That's nice. I mean, it's nice that you recovered, that is. When I come around, though, I made sure to finish my mission, sir. Your mission? Yes, sir. The blue badger, sir. I returned him to the entrance before things got out of hand. Well, we can all rest easy now. Wow! I believe we now have a fairly accurate picture of what happened. Yes, Your Honour. Only one thing remains unclear. Was the man this officer murdered really the victim? He's got a point. Um, yes, Officer Meekins? With regard to that, sir, take a look at that. this. It was sent to my jail, jail cell. Chief Gant delivered to me this just this morning. The Chief delivered it? I have no idea. He makes no sense. He is so confusing. I am very confused. I was saying earlier, I usually love dumb characters, but him, not so much. What is that, a videotape? Yes, sir. That's absolutely right, sir. A videotape, sir. It contains footage from the security camera in the evidence room. What? But I specifically asked if there was such a tape and was told it had been mistakenly erased. That's quite a mistake. I just do what I'm told, sir. It's the only thing I'm really good at. Looks like communication with the, with the police department is as good as ever. Well then, let's have a look. Show us the video of you murdering the victim. Oh, please stop using the word murder, sir. It scares me. A video of a real murder. Just what are we getting ourselves into? This is terrifying. I'm not even gonna lie. I 
I've got food here, guys. I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna stuff my face a little bit. You never see the guy's face. Oh my god, look at him. He looks creepy as fuck. Smartly done. I'm not gonna lie. Sorry, I'm gonna eat. Give me a second. But I believe we're all thinking the same thing. How can we deal with all these unsettling feelings stirring within us? Where the hell was that wriggling piece of plywood? <laughs> sir, that is the pride and joy of the entire criminal affairs department, sir. It's the blue badger, sir. Why am I not surprised this isn't going smoothly? Yes, well, anyway. This tape seems to prove that the witness did indeed encounter a someone. And it... Oh my god! Why is it with this controller? Your Honour, instead of relying on clearly incomplete footage, the witness's testimony will be suffice. Is that alright with you, Miss Officer Meekins? Yes, sir. As you wish, sir. His face can't be clearly seen in the video, but there's no question that the other person was Detective Goodman, sir. I mean, he opened the locker, which required Detective Goodman's fingerprint to do. The locker he opened is unquestionably Detective Goodman's locker, sir. So it must be him. No one else could have unlocked it. What's this about a fingerprint? Each detective has been given a locker equipped with a fingerprint activated lock. These locks ensure that each locker can only be opened by the detective it belongs to. Intriguing. That would mean the victim at the crime scene would have to have been Detective Goodman. Very well. The defense may begin its cross-examination. I don't know where this cross-examination will lead, but everything begins with contradictions. That's where I have to start. Let's see. Tell me, were you able to get a good look at him, at the face of the man who attacked you with a knife? So, sir, if you must label people as being as as yeah, as having been seen or not seen the man's face, I believe I would be classified as the latter, the latter. But you were standing right in front of him, were you not? More to the point, you were the person who fought him, weren't you? Oh yes, sir. But I didn't get a clear look at his face, sir. I'm not the kind of guy who looks directly at people when talking with them, you see. Yeah, that's a good trait for a police officer. So I'm sure it was him. I bet my badge on it. But you don't know that for sure, do you? You never actually saw Detective Goodman's face. Well, I suppose you might say that. That's if... That is... Right. Yeah, alright. Why is everyone looking at me? If I had to label your stairs, it's disturbing or... Me, kids. Eek. Having been shown a questionable video at best, we are not in the best of moods. Now please be more certain when you testify. Y yes sir. You claim the man who branched the knife at you was Bruce Goodman. Can tell us why you are positive it was him? When he opened the locker, there was a detective Goodman- Oh my god. I'm starting to not be able to read. About these lockers, is there no other way to open them? No sir, I myself tried all kinds of methods in the past. They only respond to bit registered fingerprints, sir. I wonder what kind of methods he's tried. If the man opened the lockers, the lockers lock, which only responds to the res to its registered fingerprints, then he must be the person the locker was assigned to. Exactly my point, sir, and this too. The locker he opened is unquestionably detected good news. How do you know that information? I've heard rumors, sir, from people in the know, sir. People in the know. The workers in the department cafeteria, sir, they kept keep me informed. They also listen to my romantic troubles, sir. For the record, the open locker did indeed belong to Detective Goodman. I verified this, verified this information through a more reliable source. Hmm, so the victim opened the locker with his own fingerprint. However, the most important detail is not shown in this video of the man's face. 
So, sir, if I may say something, sir, please do. After all, you are the one being examined. I don't understand why the man's face is so important in this case, sir. I mean, it was his hand that opened a fingerprint lock. And it was his hand that tried to thrust his knife into my body, sir. My unsettled state can testify enough to this, sir. Yes, you have a point, and footage doesn't lie. That is, unless the defense can find a problem with it. Mr. Wright, let's check the court record again. There's got to be a problem, right? Huh. Regarding the video contained on this tape, there's one thing in particular that stands rather strange. Strange? This contradiction leads to the possibility that the man may not have been Detective Goodman. What? This video contains such a contradiction? Interesting, Your Honour. I have a proposal. Yes, Mr. Edgeworth. I propose we have the defence point out to us this alleged contradiction in the video. You would want me to point it out. Oh my god, why do I have to do this? Very well, proposal accepted. Let us further inspect this piece of evidence. I will now play the security tape. Mr. Wright, please show us this con contradiction you speak of. I have to point out a problem in the video. This is the first time I've ever had to do that. The only thing I'm already... I'm already thinking about it. The only thing I can think is that the locker was already open. Because they told us about the light, right? It's a good door. Thank you. I'll set it up so you can fast forward, rewind and pause the video. Just take a good look and be sure to point out the right thing. Please don't play it too many times. I, I can't stand watching this video. How did this guy ever become a police officer? Now then, Mr. Wright, please enlighten us. Where's the contradiction? Oh my god. Pauses B. Ah, see? I was right! Look, see? The thing that's strange about this video has got to be this. Officer Meekins, sir, do you mean me, sir? As I understand it, the locker apparatus works like this. When you grab the handle, a sensor reads your fingerprint if it's a match. The light turns on and the lock is released. Uh, according to my Remy Limited experience, that's the way I understand it, sir. If so, then something is seriously wrong with this picture. I meant to... No, I don't think I can do anything. When a victim reaches for the handle to open the locker, let's rewind to a little earlier. This is creepy. I'm not gonna lie, this whole thing is kind of creepy. Here, notice the light. What's this? It's already lit. Precisely my point, Your Honor. The locker has, was already open before the victim grabbed the handle. Ah! Order, order. What's the meaning of this? It's very simple, Your Honor. The locker wasn't locked on the day of the crime. The locker locks are controlled by an electronic system. When a door is shut, a sensor is triggered. And the locker is automatically locked. Oh, I know. It must have broken down. Of course, I'm not an expert in this. That's not likely, Your Honor. The sensor would detect and report any malfunction. Oh, well. Just good to show novices should keep their mouth shut. So then, Mr. Wright, do you have an explanation? Me, Your Honor? Yes. Why wasn't the locker locked? Me, Your Honor. Yes. Well, you see, this isn't exactly my field. What do you think, Miss Scientific Investigator? Huh? Oh, um, maybe something like jam to system sensor. Something jam to sensor, say? There's so- there's something else that seems out of place in this video. Yeah, I thought so too. There's gotta be another clue somewhere in this footage. Oh, so, like, it's gonna be he accidentally got something stuck in the door then. Because that's the other big thing they were telling us about it was, like, things get stuck and end up, like, outside of it. I'm gonna fast forward. Uh, more creepy video. Oh, there! 
Hey, look! Wait, goodbye! Take that. <clears throat> Please watch closely. This is the continuation of the part I showed you earlier. And they turned the sound off. Watch this. Something white fell out of the locker. This time, it's been my experience that things fall out when doors are open. Huh? Oh my god! What is it? Like... Now it's just fucking going on on its own. I'm not even pressing buttons anymore. You know what? Just in case it is this controller. But I've missed a hell of a lot of dialogue. I'm gonna quickly stick in my PlayStation 1. So there's gonna be some beeping when I get this. Oh my god, why is it trapped around my chair? There's gonna be some beeping. Do you mind the beeping? Wait, what? USB not device not recognized? Excuse me? What do you mean? Yeah, no, it didn't recognize it. Fuck. There you go. The sensor triggers the lock and the door is shut. What if something was inserted, say, between the sensor and the door? In, inserted? Oh, it's very obviously the fucking glove. Just show them the glove. I like how spooky this video was, though. The white thing wasn't inside the locker. We are stuck between the door and the sensor. Oh, I understand now, sir. It's just like my tie. Two out of three times to get stuck in the door when I get out of my patrol vehicle, sir. Instead of my door closing, the object would have, ha would have to be extremely thin to fit in the door. Not only that, it would also have to block electrical currents. It would need to be an insulator. Yes, an insulator, but at the crime scene, there just might have been something that fits the description. But so, sir, my insulator, you don't... I think I finally got this figured out. Well, Meekins is just auto-going. I am not skipping Meekins. He's just auto-going. Very well. Will the defense please present the relevant evidence? What was this insulator that was stuck in a locker door? What was the fucking glove? I mean, you could see it was the glove. I found this near the locker, a thin rubber glove, but we can't be sure what this that this was in the victim's locker. It was a it has a tag that says SO9 incident. The video seems to depict the victim opening the door. But that isn't the case. The lit lamp attests to this. On the day of the crime, even I could have opened that locker. Is that not so, Officer Meekins? Sir, it would appear so, sir. Order, order, order. So I to believe then that the victim, whom this witness stabbed in the evidence room, was not Detective Goodman. Do not be misled, Your Honor. What do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? The defense has merely demonstrated that possibility and nothing more. The victim in this video was indeed Bruce Goodman. The prosecution will offer one more testimony to prove this. What? Officer Meekins, please testify about this. Sir, Mami, sir? I'm not sure what you're referring to, sir. Oh, you mean that, sir? Of course, sir. Is this a joke? Is this a yoke to you? Very well, begin your testimony. Am I a yoke to you? There's one other thing that proves the man was Detective Goodman, sir. To enter the evidence room, one must use their ID card. When an ID card is used, there's a record of it. At the time of the crime, the detective had used his card. An ID card record, I see. I have the ID card record right here, Your Honor. The ID used at 514 is that of the victim. 
Just before the crime, hmm, yes, without a doubt, this is the victim's ID. However, one thing does strike me as unusual. Several hundred cases should have been due for transferal. Why were there so few people using this room? This particular evidence room is only used for storing certain special cases. Special cases? Extremely violent cases involving police staff. Just hearing that makes my hair stand on end. Me too, although it doesn't make much of a difference. Because he's a spiky boy, get it? Get it? There were only a few cases up for transferal here, and most were cleared up by noon. Right, I see. Now let us move on to the cross-examination. Hmm. There's one other thing that proves the man was Detective Goodman. I'm going to press you on everything. So unlike your earlier testimony, you believe this to be rock solid, do you? Yes, sir. Solid as stone, sir. If my hand wasn't wrapped in bandages, I'd even give you the V for victory sign, sir. Couldn't you just use his right hand for that? Let's hear him out fully. As we've seen, one never knows what we mu he might say until the very last second. This is true. To enter the evidence room, one must use their ID card. Is that card hanging from your neck, one of those ID cards? Yes, sir. This card right next to my cuff, sir. I keep it here so I won't ever forget it. But what if someone were to steal it from you, keeping it out, of the op out, out in the open like that? Maybe I shouldn't wear it around my neck. Remember when I said two out of three times my tie gets stuck when I get out of my car? Well, the remaining time is that my ID card gets stuck. Instead of the door closing, my ID card chokes me. Maybe I should just leave this one alone. At any rate, each police officer has only one ID card, but the police department and the prosecutor's office can attest to this. Please proceed with your testimony. When an ID card is used, there's a record of it. Let it be noted that this is the record the witness referred to. Let me see. Yes, that would be it. Detective Goodman. What's the matter? Uh, according to this, Mr. Edgeworth, your name is on here. So it is your honour. Not the prosecutor again. Mummy, is that man in blue a murderer? Shh, don't stare at him. You've got the wrong colour. It would seem the inquiry committee will want to speak with you again today. I have nothing to be ashamed of regarding my actions or their consequences. For now, let us continue with the cross-examination. Poor Mr. Edgeworth, it must be so difficult for him. At the time of the crime, the detective had used his card. Earlier, I believe you testified that when you asked the man to show his ID card, he pulled a knife on you. Yes, sir. He didn't show me any ID card, sir. Don't you think that's odd? I mean, if he had his ID card, all he had to do was show it to you. There wouldn't be any reason to draw a knife. But maybe he's just panic. Panic. Everything stems from contradictions. Let's point them out. Mr. Wright, what do you think? I'm confused. What? The problem with this ID card testimony is far too obvious. It's not like Edgeworth to miss something like this. You're thinking too hard about it. Come on, let's show them what we've got. Didn't he write his number down wrong on this thing? Lost item report? Wait, what? Let me read this again. I'm gonna put that- wait, no, I wanted to present that. Oh my god. Go on. Wait one moment, Officer Meekins. I I'm not good at waiting, sir. I have the victim's ID card right here. I found it at the crime scene. That makes sense. When I say crime scene, I'm not referring to the evidence room at the police department. I mean the other crime scene. The underground parking lot at the prosecutor's office. Your Honour, I have one more piece of evidence to present. It's a very important clue regarding the victim's ID card. A uh, lost item report. It's only half completed. But it shows that Detective Goodman had lost something on the day of the crime. Something important enough to fill out this report. Let me guess, you believe this something to be his ID card, right? I can't say for sure, but there is a high probability. On the day of the crime, Detective Goodman was not carrying his card. Order, order, so now, what does this all mean? It can only mean one thing, it doesn't even require much thought. The man Officer Meekins encountered in the evidence room was not Detective Goodman, but and rather the man who stole his ID card. 
Order, order, order. Does the prosecution have a response? I have only one thing to say to the defence. Bravo, Mr. Wright, but bravo. Allow me to summarise the defence's argument. At 5.15pm on the day of the crime, the man in the evidence room, Officer Meekins encountered, was not Detective Goodman. There are two grounds to support this. First, the locker in the evidence room was already unlocked. Second, the victim lost his ID card. Am I correct so far, Mr. Wright? Yes. What's he up to? That being the case, we must inevitably arrive at a single conclusion. If the victim in this video is a fake, then the murder in the evidence room is also fake. In other words, the security camera does not show the instant, instant of the murder. Uh, th that is... Well, I guess that's right. There's something wrong, Mr. Wright. Only moments ago, you seemed content to be pointing your finger around. This isn't going to end well. Well, well, it seems you finally realised exactly what you've gone to this, such lengths to prove. Explain yourself, Mr. Edgework. The defence has already done the explaining for me. The victim in this video is a fake, which means a murder did not take place. At the police department at 5.15 of the day of the crime, so... So the real crime could only take place at one location, the underground parking lot, at the prosecutor's office, the murderer being Miss Lana Sky, the defendant. The evidence is compelling. A trustworthy witness observed the moment the defendant used the murder weapon. Ah! I knew that testimony was way too shabby. It was all a trap from the beginning. The activity in the evidence room still leaves many questions unanswered. Who exactly was the victim Officer Meekins encountered? And where did this person disappear to? However, this trial's purpose is to examine only the murder of Detective Goodman. Just so, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, you have to do something or else Lana. What do I do? How am I supposed to get myself out of this mess? Objection! I'll object. One moment, Your Honor. One now, Mr. Wright. Don't tell me you're objecting to what you've just proven. Of course not, but I almost walked right into the prosecu prosecution's trap. What are you talking about? This cross-examination has proven one thing and one thing only. The security video did not show me show the actual murder. N didn't show the murder. It's just gonna be Marshall and um whatever the woman's called, Angel, whatever. Is it Angel Sky? It's Angel something. However, it cannot be said that it is unrelated to the murder in the parking lot. Specifically, large amounts of blood traces were found in the evidence room. Defence demands further examination into the truth of the matter. Mr. Edgeworth. Yes, Your Honour. If this court were to examine this further, other witnesses will be necessary. Is the prosecution prepared? I'm sorry, Your Honour. The prosecution considered the incident at the police department to be unrelated. We have no, not prepared any other witnesses for this incident. This just might be my chance. Time to call a certain Texas Ranger to the stand. Mr. Wright. Do you mean, Your Honour, the defence would like to request a specific witness? Oh, whom do you have in mind? Someone we have reason to believe knows the truth. The truth behind the activities that took place in the evidence room. The prosecution requests to hear this person's name before deciding whether or not to comply. Very well then, Mr. Wright. This person whom you would have testified, what is his or her name? Uh, That one. Him. Wait. Oh, that. Officer Jake Marshall. Why him? I can't let Edgeworth know everything just yet. He's in charge of the evidence room. I feel we should hear what he has to say. The prosecution agrees to the defense's request. Since he was responsible for guarding the room, we should hear his testimony. Fortunately, he works in the police department. We shouldn't need longer than 20 minutes to prepare. Very well. The court will take a 30 minute recess. Or the witness is subpoenaed. Will the pros prosecution please prepare the witness during this time? We will, Your Honor. Court's now in recess. Ah!
I think I'm gonna end it there though, because I really need to eat. So I'm gonna stop. And I'm gonna raid someone. Who we got? Yeah, I'm ending now anyway. What else? Use online. There's a lot of people online actually. Um, it's this time Moogle actually not end. Where did Moogle go? Moogle already ended and Moogle's there. And Moogle's still playing, I think. Like. Right. Is he ending? Or is he still going? I'm gonna write him anyway. If he's ending, you can go with him wherever he goes. Moogle play. Oh no, wait a minute. I think he's actually ending. Right, I'm just gonna raid him quickly. Right, I'll be back on Thursday and we'll finish this case. Go say hi to Moogle. <laughs> he might be ending, but just go there. Just go there. Right, bye.